Yes, welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another casual commerce stream where we take it easy and uh, we learn some stuff. And today we have like a, um, we have a very delicate subject, you know, something that is still very touchy in Spain, right? It's uh, the the terrorist group uh, ETA, E-T-A, Euskadi Ta Alcartasuna, which is uh, Euska, uh, um, the Basque Country and Freedom, which was an independentist uh, armed uh, force. So, you know, somebody, somebody's terrorists are always somebody else's uh, revolutionary army. But it, they had a very difficult story, and they left uh, they left behind a lot of a lot of bodies, alas. So it was it was very difficult. Yeah, the two party the two party thing is not healthy for for even for a bourgeois democracy, which is like ridiculous in itself. But a bourgeois democracy with a two you know with a two party system is even it's even worse. Lunch time is over, so lurk away, don't worry, run nights. We're gonna we're gonna take a we're gonna take a little bit of a dive into a very specific time for this terrorist organization slash liberation army. I'm not gonna judge. Uh, say it's it's and it it's very difficult. It's very complicated to follow the the existence of this of this uh, organization uh, and to pass historical judgment uh, because it changed over time a lot. But we're gonna we're gonna see the uh, the year. I think it's uh, 1973. So the Franco regime was in full fledged, and um, and shit was going down. A lot of shit was going down big time. If you know what I'm saying. Bill Gates is a madman who wants to depopulate the earth. What? <laughs> Bill Gates is a it's a billionaire, another asshole. <laughs> it's fine. Much love. Don't worry about it. It's just, you know, don't don't, you know, don't don't feed into conspiracy theories, all right? <laughs> because, you know, I I understand, you know, conspiracy theories are like soothing for the mind when uh, times are as bad as these are, you know? And uh, you know, it's it's very difficult. Zero love for Bill Gates, you know. Zero love for any billionaire. You you don't get to be a billionaire by working hard and and playing fair. You get to be a billionaire by stealing uh, surplus uh, value from people, which is uh, something that, it, although justified by the current ideology of capitalist realism, it is absolutely moral and absolutely monstrous. So we don't need to uh, ascribe magic power to these billionaires and say that they're doing vaccine magic or microchip bullshit, because that's that's absolute fantasy to to you know people who are trying to grasp the difficult realities that we're living right now. All of the capitalism in, is in crisis. You know the economy is in shambles because we're paying all the cocaine that all those motherfuckers were doing in the 1980s. And we're we're paying the bill right now with our with our work or with our lack of work, you know. We're we're paying the consequences for all the deregulation, the Reagan slash uh, Thatcher era. So that's what's going on with uh, the Bill Gateses of the world and the Elon Muskses of the world. They're parasites. They need to get. They need to be expropriated and and get a job, motherfuckers. Get a get a real job. Let's put them out, you know, get them a broom and get them to clean the streets, which is a very dignified and wonderful job, you know. And then they'll be helping society instead of instead of making a mess, you know, globally. Let's give them a nice responsible job, which is the thing to do, if you know what I mean. So yeah, back to subject and um, yeah. <laughs> if they wanted or are planning to do it. Yeah, our goal is to dismantle the institution that gives them any power. Exactly. It's a structural thing, people. It's a structural thing. So there's no 
I mean, there, 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 there are individuals involved, but, you know, but it's a, it's a structural thing always, you know, just don't worry about it. So back to subject, ETA, ETA, was a, a terrorist organization for some, a liberation army for others. And uh, there was a lot of violence. There was there were a lot of bom a lot of bombs, a lot of shootings. There was there was a lot of violence in, involved in there. And uh, it's one of the things that we're gonna um, that we're gonna go through in in the legitim legitimacy and the context of, of violence and when it, when is violence appropriate. And uh, exactly, we're gonna go to Operation Ogre, uh, Operation Ogro, which was. Uh, yeah, you're you're from Northern Ireland, yeah. So you know you know a little bit, you know, exactly. Support the Basque people in the struggle. Absolutely. The Bas the Basque people have their own language, they have their own culture. They deserve to be, you know, to be their own masters. So, you know, if there's a an a relation with the rest of Spain, which is, you know, there's this historical relation that is, you know, mercantile and and uh, you know population wise it's super cool you know but they need to have their own self determination it's the same as the as catalonia same as galicia uh spain is a is a pastiche it's a big collage it's a big t tapestry of different countries so what these people that were fighting for was the independence of the basque country but it started with um yeah, I did get it. Oh, oh, it works my emote. That's super cool. <laughs> I don't know. I was I was working on it, okay? And and I'm I'm working on on getting more more of these things. I'm I'm getting I'm getting used to the to the system, you know? Like uh yeah. There you go. That's pew. That's that's the emote. <laughs> I guess it was accepted. It takes some time processing it. And um yeah. Uh, okay, back back on track. <laughs> Sorry about getting distracted, but yeah, I, I'm so glad you you like the emote. Um, well, I'll try to make some. I have some more prepared, but Twitch doesn't let me until you know, a while later. We'll we'll see about that. Okay, and um, yeah, Eta were fighting for for this independence of the Basque country, but it was you know when Eta was born, and it was born uh, in a church. Funny enough. Uh, they were they were uh, opposing Francoism, uh, and they were opposing the the fascist Franco regime, and they were they were opposing uh, based on so many different you know ideologies, like the nationalist Sabino Arana, who was a racist absolute piece of shit, who believed that the Basque have a different DNA than everyone else, you know, knowing no shit about science. I'm talking about nineteenth century bullshit. I mean Sabino Arana. Let me let me look it up quickly, very quickly. But uh, Sabino Arana. See the Wikipedia article, right? And uh, yeah, he was he was born in 1865 and died in 1903. But he was right into the you know the 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 specificity of the particularities of the Basque people the Basque language their culture it's it's undeniable it's there it happens and they need you know to have their own their own experience as as a people but at the same time you know i i would say it would be strategically good to have like this uh, strategic coalition with the rest of the country and from now, you know, considering how things are right now and after Francoism and after the quote unquote bourgeois democracy, whatever, uh, it wouldn't be bad for, for the different nations within, within the Hispania region, the land of the rabbits, uh, to get federated, to become like a federation of different states, you know, I, w I think it would be, it would be excellent, you know. <laughs> recovering that word you just posted <laughs> from nights <laughs> hello hello Ida what's up good uh, good go, go, good dog good dog go, go uh, so yeah that's uh, that's ETA okay the Basque nationalist uh, organization so without further ado uh, we're gonna we're gonna get started with that documentary okay Yay. There you go. Thank you for 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 the subscription. Thank you for the sub. 
You're very generous, Rob Knights. Thank you so much for this. Really appreciate it. Getting those, um, what's, um, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> ahoy, ahoy, capricious nerd. And so glad you got the, that, that gift from Realm Knights. Thank you so much. So let's, let's get on to it, okay? I got the documentary ready here. I hope we don't get like that many strikes because music and stuff, but here you go. It's, this is all about ETA, okay? And it's, a, it's year 1973, and uh, there was a whoopsie. Whoopsie indeed. Sorry about this. Okay, there you go. Uh, is this the right place? Yes. I got this gesture that I <laughs> make thing, make a mess every now and then. And um, yeah, um, so there was this Spanish president uh, called uh, Carrero Branco under the Franco dictatorship at the t at the time. And we had like a, one of the first flying presidents that was flying very high. You'll see, you'll see, you'll see in a minute. <laughs> but it's flying. And some people have actually gone to jail because of making jokes with this motherfucker. Kidnapping of Huarte. I cannot translate this because it's in Basque, but we'll get subtitles soon. Chiquia, dead. That's a flying president. Yahoo! Carrero Blanco. Se descartó la, el secuestro y se decidió ejecutar. It's a, it's an extract. We're gonna get there later. Si no ha sido Franco, por lo menos ha sido el segundo. Ah, because this is more or less like the intro. This is from Euskal Televista, the the Basque TV. So with transition, the road starts towards democracy after 40 years of a uh, horrendous dictatorship. That's what they say. And yeah, there was a lot of... Yeah, that's Carrero Blanco, the flying president. You flies all the way up, 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 up in the air. And Franco dies and, you know, transition and whatnot. This is a chapter from a different... Yeah, Basque is very different from, it, from every other language I, I've ever seen. Basque is a uh, Basque is a very it's its own language. That's why I'm saying, you know, that it's so obvious, you know, that that the Basque culture is absolutely different. So transition in Euskadi that's the series, okay? But we're going to 1973, Operation Ogre, Operación Ogro, which was yeah. Look at that. That's a reenactment, okay? That's from the movie. But the president was going there and boom! Boom! Up, 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 up in the air on top of the building. There goes the fascist. Goodbye. Goodbye. El Pop. periodista Juan Luis Tebrián ha dejado escrito que los miembros del comando Chiquilla de ETA volvieron del revés el futuro de España. El 20 de diciembre. So the journalist Juan Luis Tebrián said that the the uh, the members of the of this uh, Chiquilla uh, commando they turned upside down the future of Spain, because this president was to be like the the number one for Franco for the dictator, and he he did some pretty impressive jump. I must say he did some yeah. He managed to fly. We had a flying flying president. That's nice. Just saying, because he was a fascist. Okay, if he if he weren't a fascist, this would be a problem, and that's one of the things that I'm that I'm willing to discuss today. You know that uh, the legit the legitimacy is um, the legitimacy of violence, right? W and and this motherfucker, he was a dangerous, cruel motherfucker who signed so many death sentences on people for for thinking different than the than the fascist regime. So, you know, I would say justified, but let's put things in context, okay? And so, November 1973. And all of this is real footage, by the way, of the red car. The, the red car of uh, Almiral, Almiral Carrero Blanco, who was the, to be, you know, the, the president of Spain during the Franco dictatorship, in which 
Franco was the head of state and this guy was the president. This cruel, evil motherfucker. In aquellos momentos era, en muchos aspectos, más importante que el propio dictador. And, and the, the, the narrator is saying here that in many ways he was more, much more important than the dictator himself because he was really uh, on top of, uh, of actual policy. So there's that, I guess. So, yeah, flying without wings, it's a neat trick, but not one <laughs> we want to repeat. I mean, yeah, I mean, it has to be, you know, an oppressive fascist who is doing active, active harm, if you know what I'm saying. Todos coinciden en que con esta acción el régimen franquista comenzaba su agonía. So everybody's coinciding that with this action, the Francoist regime started, you know, fading away. It was the last straws of the Francoist regime. Because this guy was to be the guy who was making sure that the Francoist regime uh, continued the way it was. And, you know, uh, in hindsight, you know, this was, this was something that changed the, the, the history of the country. That's the street where it happened. That this is real footage. Yeah, the dispatch to the street Claudio Coelho. Copy, copy. Let's see our tornado. Let's see with this explosion. That's the crater that it left. It was a huge crater because water pipes were broken and was filled with water. But it was a huge crater that these people did like a whole operation. They were digging the tunnel under the street for 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 months for months on, you know, and, and, and then, then they wired everything. Yeah, we'll, we'll see more details about it. Real footage, all of it. Uh, police are suspecting of a gas explosion at, at, the, at the time when this happened. This is like, a, they're trying to rebuild the real time, uh, uh, you know, uh, happening. There are buried cars. So two wounded people so far, that's what they found because they, they couldn't find the, the president's car. Yeah, they're, they're asking for the president. So they're trying to locate the, the president's car. So they're, they're gathering witness statements that there was one car that got the whole of the explosion and it went up flying and uh, got, you know, to the, to the rooftop. And there were three people in it. Copy that. Go ahead. That's the real footage of the car. And they're, they're confirming that it's the president's car right now. And he seems to be dead. They're trying to confirm if he's dead or not, but they're not able so far. That's the motherfucker grieving with a widow. Fuck him. Fuck him and his legacy. Fuck him. Fuck that piece of shit. That's... So that's one thing, you know, let's go back at this. This motherfucker grieving you know, hurting for the death of his friend. But he, he was signing death, death sentences for political prisoners at the same time. So fuck, fuck this hypocrite piece of shit. There were, that's that's, that's a, a, a common characteristic of fascism. They're very sensitive to their own, but the others are object, uh, uh, objects and enemies to get rid of. You know, the, so they have no problem ki killing us, but they, they grieve so much for their own. Fuck these people. We will grieve for everyone, even when that shit is necessary. But, you know, fuck this motherfucker. Fucking hypocrites. 1973. Operación Ogro. Yeah, it's a lot of music and stuff. 
again they're, they're taking events of kidnappings and stuff en Euskadi, el año comienza con el secuestro de Felipe Huarte, miembro de la... So 1973 starts in Euskadi with the kidnapping of this, uh, this guy, Huarte, who was a member, más de member of the most powerful dynasty in Nafarroa, in Navarra. In, in, uh, you know, it's uh, one part of the Basque country that is not technically, quote unquote, part of the Basque country, but is one of the historical kingdoms that initiated the Basque country. And it should be, but, you know, Naf people in Navarra have, you know, are a little bit split on this, okay? But yeah, more or less, it's Euskadi, okay? We're we'll take it as as Euskadi, but you know, with an with a with a caveat, caveat there. Su empresa, favorecida por la dictadura. His company was favored by dictatorship, and this is the building of a uh, Valley of the Falling of the Fallen that was built with uh, political prisoners uh, captured in the. Uh, no, it's not in France. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, that's not Naf uh, Nafarroa. That's. Um, Iparralde, which are a few counties of the Basque Country that are placed in France, yes. But those are those are Iparralde. It's it is the part that of the Basque Country that exists in, in France, and uh, Nafarroa is like the, it's uh, south of the Pyrenees, basically. And uh, they have chunks of the Pyrenees. You know, the Pyrenees is this mountain range that is amazing. That basically sp splits the Iberian Peninsula with the trunk of the of the uh, continental Europe, and um, uh, the 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 part of the Pyrenees that it, that is in Nafarroa is amazing. The whole forest of Irati, and uh, the whole valley of Itois that was you know I, it, it it will be some chapter that I will I will cover for you as well because in Itois there was there was built the, the they built this uh, dam. But this is like more contemporary. This is 1973. Let's go back. And th this is the Valley of the Fallen that was built with mostly slave labor from uh, Republican prisoners, basically. Había participado en la construcción del Valle de los Caídos. So, you know, this, this, this guy, he, he was very wealthy and uh, the dictatorship uh, gave him, you know, the, the contract for the Valley of the Fallen and the, the free slave labor. Back in the day, we're talking about way before uh, this year of 1973. This would start probably in the 50s. La que se como a políticos. Yeah, political prisoners were like slave slave labor for this. And this is the the whole thing, you know. They carved the whole the whole mountain. The the whole mountain. I would suggest that you go find Valley of the Fallen or ba Valle de los Caídos in which the dictator was buried for many years until not long ago where he was taken out of Valley of the Fallen to a regular cemetery. And now uh, right, right now there, there's some discussion in the government about resignifying the Valley of the Fallen towards being a place for memory for, for, for the civil war in general or the quote-unquote civil war, which, as you know, I'm going to repeat this again, was not actually a civil war, but an extermination war carried on by the fascists to, uh, you know, make a scorched land kind of thing, you know, leaving no, no political uh, opposition behind. Hola, espavientos. Hola. So this was Valley of the Fallen. Uh, yeah, let's keep on moving. Uh, yeah. La familia controla directa o indirectamente algunas de las empresas más importantes de Navarra. So this family controls some of the most important companies in, in Navarra. Nafarroa, again. This was, this was very heavy work. They basically carved the, 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 the inside of a, of a mound. They, they carved a, a, a a basilica and and they carved uh, a monastery on on the other side of the of the whole valley of Colgamuros in Sierra de Guadarrama like 50 kilometers away from Madrid which is a beautiful place you know and they basically destroyed valley of Col of Colgamuros to be honest and the it, the the centerpiece is this huge cross which is like uh hun let me see how high it actually is but uh, let me look up ex the exact height of that fucking cross, but uh, Valley of the Fallen, which I, by the way, I'll leave you, uh, I'll leave you the, the wiki article into that. 
Oh, thank you again for 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 the for the subscription gift, Realm Knights. Thank you so much. So I think the cross. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Valley of the Fallen, Basilica, Cross, and Abbey. Uh, St. Peter's Basilica, Vatican Hill, yada, 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 150 meter high, 50 feet high cross. It's a huge cross. It's, it's a big ass cross. Okay. It's way too big. And yeah, the church is corrupt, but I would love to see the basilicas. Now this one is, uh, it's like socialist, realist, you know, fascist. It's really ugly. It's ugly as fuck. I went there uh, as a school kid back in the day, way back in the day. And it's, it's, you know, everything is big to make you feel small. It has all the brutalism and, and, and you know, the national socialist realism or call it, you know, whatever. But it, it is really fucking ugly. And the cross, you can see it like from, from the city, basically, if you look at the mountains. And it, it really destroys the... Yeah, really, really, really thanks for, for the gift of the sub. Let's continue. It was grueling work. See these people just, just you know by hand carrying the, the stones you know and all that shit there was no motorization no you know it was it was done on the cheap but with with a lot of slave labor it's it really sucks oh color footage look at that convenio colectivo de una de estas empresas por finasa finaliza el año 1972 it's like the collective bargain of the, one of these companies that belonged to this to this motherfucker who was kidnapped was was about to end in 1972. So you know uh, the management denies to to grant any any improvements basically, and the workers start striking. Conceden mejoras al resto de sus empresas para evitar que se produzca un paro de solidaridad. So the 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 huartes, the the owners, uh, the family, they they what they do is is they grant improvements to the rest of the workers of the rest of the companies to avoid to having a strike all the way through the companies that all of the companies that they own. So they it was basically you know they were aiming for the mono, monopoly. Y mandan cartas de despido a los 140 obreros de la plantilla. And they sending firing letters to all of the workers. Interviene, pero el paro continúa. So there's a big strike and they're trying to repress it. This was the famous and feared police from the dictatorship. They were called Los Grises, the gray ones. And yeah. Hello Trekkie, we're we're checking we're checking a little bit of uh, of Spanish history with ETA and uh, violence and figuring out when and if violence is justified uh, when in this case struggling against a dictatorship or a, or a totalitarian regime, right? So yeah, yeah, they they like they they love these ego projects absolutely, and the the motherfucker was buried there, you know, in the, in the this valley of the fallen. So there's that. And these gray motherfuckers, these cops, were absolutely murderers. They were, they killed, they shot to kill people. Uh, there was this, uh, another massacre in, in, in Vitoria, also in the Basque Country, in, in Gasteiz, where they basically shot on unarmed people that were enclosed in a, inside of a small basilica. And they were, they were just, you know, throwing smoke bombs and shooting at them as they were coming out all confused. But shooting like live ammunition, they killed a, a shit ton of people. El 16 de enero de 1973, un comando de cuatro miembros de ETA penetra en Villa Adrián, domicilio de los Suarte, llevándose al empresario en su propio coche. So yeah, in January 1973, a commando enters the the home of the family, and they took the they took the the boss in their in his own car. And by the way, Turkey, thank you so much for the raid. Appreciate it. We're discussing this kidnapping of this of this uh, owner. You know this, yeah, yeah, cops murdering people. Quelle surprise! But this was the fascist uh, Franco regime. Right now, you know they're doing it everywhere. 
but it was it was frowned upon back in the day, right? By the regular uh, audience, you know, the common people. So they kidnap this motherfucker in the middle of the of the strike. Los secuestradores exigen como condición de su puesta en libertad el acceder a las reivindicaciones de los obreros. So one of the demands of the kidnappers was that they access they 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 agree to to the workers' reivindications. So basically, that were they, they were they were they were they have to yield to the workers' demands. Uh, it, that's one of the conditions of, of his release. To be fair, ETA did this a lot. They took, you know, successful entrepreneurs and whatnot, and they did it after the dictatorship as well. They were taking like uh, company owners and powerful people, and they gave them like what they call the um, the revolutionary tax. Uh, tax. So they kidnapped them and got money, you know, uh, in in exchange of protection. That was a little bit of a mob type of operation, but I understand, you know. It's a, it's a little bit of a mafia thing. And there's an explanation for this that is going to come a little bit later in the documentary if you, f if you follow close. Because, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You're going to learn some Spanish. Deaths. <laughs> so, absolutely. You know, the, the, the board caves in right away uh, the day after there they cave in to all of the demands and and the strike is solved so the workers in in this company they go back to work and and um, start renegotiation renegotiating the new the, the new terms you know the new convenio it's like a negotiation like a collective bargaining right that it, they sign a document that is valid for a certain number of 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 years that you know that you it's it's more or less the, the work conditions that are agreed upon be, between the company and the workers so yeah there is of uncertainty uh, of uncertainty uncertainty in villa adriana Ekintza horren jatorria aurreko urtekoa da, mila behatzen dira erogita magi urtean e, erabakitzen dugu hori egitea. This is Basque. <laughs> so this is not Spanish. If it sounds like, like Spanish and you have like some basic Spanish and you don't understand a thing, it's because it's not Spanish. Like if you see the, the tonal intonation is the same, but the language is completely different. It's Euskera, it's a Basque language. So I'm going to translate the subtitles for you. Uh, <laughs> Before you came politically active, you went to the valley and and, li and you liked it. I don't know. I, th I found it very brutalist. I found the the reason for its building absolutely nauseating, of course. But it impressed me how fascists can use and co-op popular signifiers. Yeah, yeah it, I, I what I felt it was everything is, was made big, so I would feel small. That's something that I really that really struck me when I was there as a kid. You know, from my my children's eyes which were not so political but then again I was you know my family the, my, my whole family was political and we were I knew where where, where I was coming you know and uh, I had like a little bit of a pre pre uh, precondition you know yeah yeah that yeah yeah it's it's impressive but I don't I don't think it's impressive in a nice way like I remember you know having a uh, when I was 16 and visiting uh, Notre Dame, and I had really, I had like a big, you know, I had Stendhal syndrome, you know, it was so beautiful. It was so gothic, you know, it was so medieval, something. There's, there was something about that, that interpretation of the gothic style. But yeah, it's oppressive more than impressive. I, I agree so much. I agree so much, Aspadientos. Yeah, you know. It's yeah, exactly. The music sounds similar to Spanish, but it's, it's Basque. Okay, it's a completely different language. Not not. I mean, yeah. It's <laughs> uh, one one day I will learn Euskara. Uh, I know how to count to I think uh, six or seven. Bad be irulao bot saspe saspe. Yeah. Uh, so in the year seventy two, we decided uh, to make that action. It means the kidnapping. So from the month of November ba zergatik funtsean but from the month of November the strike was very strong so it went on up until December if I don't recall badly 
uh, the revealing the demands of the workers were not at all uh, unfeasible but the posture that but the position of the of the company was really really tough and absolutely close to dialogue so the strike went on and we continued with the, we, we followed closely the development of it so our planning was clear we couldn't we couldn't we couldn't intervene until, or meanwhile, the expectations were open within the movement itself. But our position was, you know, intervening. Our position was intervening only in case that finally the, the workers themselves with their methods were not, were not able to, to carry on their objectives. And that's what happened. But there's another condition that delays the liberation of, of Ugarte. Yeah, the, the pay of a ransom of 50 million pesetas, which was a shit ton of money. But these people, these people had it, eh? they had the money. But they, they, it hurts them, that's what hurts them the most, you know, getting rid of money. They're really greedy, those bastards. Um... Yeah, yeah, we're speaking about the Basque Country today, Brenda. Um, and uh, yeah, a little bit of uh, about ETA and uh, a, a fly flying president, Carrero Blanco, who who was th our fa the first Spanish in orbit. <laughs> it was, uh, uh, you know, that that's how far the, the space ra race uh, was going on during the Franco days, and it was carried on by by ETA. Basically, they launched the first Spanish space mission. Even when there's a there's an incredibly funny movie by Javier Aguirre. It was uh, what's the name of it? I I remember it later. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> never so much from the subject. Yeah, I mean, no, no, I'm friendly. Who the Basque? The Basque are the best. Ah, fantastic people. Oh, I love, I love. I love the Basque. Just check out Carrero Blanco. You'll see, or Operación Ogro, which is the name of the... Yeah, definitely, definitely. Like, if you see... <laughs> Where was this? <laughs> yep. Okay, we're in 49.39, right? No, 8.17, okay. This happened. Flying president! Yahoo! Fly high as the sky, fascist. Goodbye, fascist. El periodista Juan Luis you tried. So eight something, eight oh five, right? So the demands of the of the union, you know, there was uh, a little bit of a. Um, yeah, it's intended as a joke. In it's a joke. We're we're just joking. We're learning about history and making a few jokes along the, along the way. Yeah, that, that's a f he was ahead of, of Elon Musk. He put a car in space, you know, flying cars. We, we had flying cars for a while in 1973 in Spain. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So the demands of the workers, they were held back because they were... Uh, asking for this huge ransom of a shit ton of money. Yeah, we were here, okay? 50 million pesetas ransom, and they were denying to pay. So they finally pay and they, they release this guy Ugarte, okay? So, in one of their one of their statements, ETA affirms that this is not uh, this does not replace any of the classical methods of, of working class struggle. So it was you know they came in they chimed in to to help for a while, but they they he, they're telling you know that they, they, they never stop striking, never stop doing you know the right thing. Okay, it's just you know. They're on their own a little bit, and uh, there's an explanation for this, you'll see. Sino por el contrario, es de apoyo y so it's a support and, complement, uh, and a complement to the struggle, but it's just a little bit of support, okay? 
That's an assembly. So the action of, uh, of ETA does not get the full support of all of the consensus of, the, of all the political forces that are operating in, in the Basque country, in Euskadi. Euskadi is the, is the Basque country from now on. So every time I say Euskadi, you understand it's a Basque country, because that's, a, that's the actual name of it. Ni siquiera la de todos los obreros de Torfinasa. And even in the, in the company itself, Torfinasa, they were not, you know, not all the workers were behind the, the action. It's just, it's tricky because violence is, is complicated. And that was Bilbao before, before it got deindustrialized. It was incredibly industrial. Ah, that's the bridge of, yeah. Las comisiones obreras de Navarra no ocultan su malestar. So Comisiones Obreras is one of these main, uh, one of the, yeah, it's one of the, um, whoa, 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 easy, Brenda, I know, I know, okay? This is the case of, uh, well, the one fascist that, you know, he was, he was right to put down because he was endangering all of the, all of the people, you know? So, you know, take it, take it one step down. I know you're a little bit upset. Don't worry about it. We'll figure it out, okay? Don't worry. So going back to the, yeah, 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 don't worry about it. And um, thank you, I'm crazy. Oh, yeah, okay. That's totally not ableist uh, to say. So in Nafarroa, uh, the, the Comisiones Obreras, which was one of the main unions, you know, in Spain, one of the big, big, big unions in Spain, they, they're totally opposed to it, okay? They, they don't hide that they're upset about it. It's tricky because it's violence, you know? It's, uh, it's very complicated, okay? It's, it's tough. It's a tough subject. That's why I wanted to touch about this documentary, okay? ORT. And ORT, which is which are which are had like a big standing in Comisiones Obreras, said this statement that the the, the, the workers and Comisiones Obreras they, they can do enough to defend the workers of in Nafarroa. And in a way, yes, but in a way, the negotiations were failing with this company because this company was too powerful because it had the, the connivence of the dictatorship. They, they, they gave them uh, a position of huge power. So, the, you know, there was no, there was no way that, that, you know, companies this big, is, 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 they were like Amazon today, okay? But in Spain, you know, at a local level, but they, they were like Amazon. They were too big, too powerful to, to bargain with. So, you know, this, I guess, hey, thank you for, for the sub. Again, Realm Knights, your generosity is splendid. Thank you so much for it. Com uh, com uh, yeah, compañeros. <laughs> I was going to say compañeros in Spanish as well, but comrades, hail the working class, you know, where? to the working class. Viva! También critican el secuestro, el movimiento comunista y el Partido Comunista de España. So the communist movement and the Spanish Communist Party, they also condemn the, the kidnapping. It's, it's tricky, you know? A girlfriend of mine's mother was on holiday on the Basque, Basque region, Basque country, yeah, uh, years ago. And uh, a little, uh, all little Basque women, her, her country, your own Irish accent, yeah, and started shouting, your IRA, mi eta, <laughs> in broken English, yeah, <laughs> and hugging her, <laughs> yeah, there's this feeling of solidarity, and there, it's, it's, a, it's a very, it's a very complicated subject, really, like, in all seriousness, it's a very complicated subje subject, so, yeah, Oh, you, it's payday. <laughs> that, that explains a lot. Thanks a lot for your generosity, Realm Knights. Let us know if you need some solidarity at the end of the month. If something goes a little bit you know, sideways, we can do something about it, okay? And any of you, actually, just let us know. So the Communist Party and all the Communist movements are kind of condemning the, the kidnapping, okay? And it's, it's tricky you got, because they kind of want to fix way by, by bargaining, but... It, it it was very clear that bargaining was not working because that the, they were they were so powerful they were cor cornered, 
So in a way, you know, it's it's like refusing help from an armed organization under a dictatorship. It's I don't I don't see it. Yeah, they were really they were they were really tough. They accused us of wanting to assume the representation of the workers' movement. Our our reasoning was not that, although to me there were logical logical log there were logical criticisms in a way at the time. Most most uh, all in all. We didn't we didn't have to bother with those accusations because it was very normal. They belonged to different organizations and what was at stake was a certain complete competition. Whoop 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 too fast. A certain competition between ones and others to see who was controlling the movement. So I don't think at all that the kidnapping was bad for the workers' movement, but Oh, 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 but actually the opposite uh, because from that moment on the workers m movement in, Na in Nafarra continued way more active I don't want to say whoop, 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 too fast too fast I don't want to uh, I don't want to say that it was just because of the workers movement uh, because of that action but at least it didn't mean any obstacle for itself uh, come on Besides, in that same company, the, yeah, uh, bargain, uh, you know, uh, the uh, syndicalism was that more strength acquired from that moment on. And up until the day, it was the Abertzale syndicalism. Abertzale is the, in the Basque independent, uh, independentist uh, left-wing movement. Yo creo que entonces se vivía en el movimiento obrero, en el movimiento sindical, se vivían las cosas de forma muy diferente actualmente. He's saying, I think that the, in the in the syndicalist movement uh, and the workers movement back in the day, things were lived in a different way than they are lived now. Eh, entonces, eh, si, bien, si bien es cierto que las direcciones de algunas organizaciones sindicales, comisiones obreras en concreto, que aglutinaba al movimiento al movimiento sindical. So, oh, okay, I need to go back at this. This sentence is way too long. So, while it's true that the, while it's true that the direction of some syndical organization, like Comisiones Obreras, that was like an umbrella for the whole, uh, the whole unions, union workers thing, you know? Carrera supposed uh, supported the coup, Spanish Civil War in the. Uh, is that correct? I mean, Car uh, this was seventy three. The 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 coup what happened in nineteen thirty six, so it's it's a long time between one thing and the other. But absolutely, Carrera was one of the fascists. He was he was second to General Franco, basically. So, you know, he was one of the fascists. Are flying ex-president or never legitimate president because his, legitima his legitima uh, legitimacy came from a, an illegitimate dictatorship from a coup d'etat of fascists that were basically killing their way uh, uh, into, uh, into power. So, yeah. I mean, he supported the coup, absolutely. He was not directly involved in the coup. He was probably a soldier uh, back, back then, if any. Considering, you know, 1973, he was probably 60-something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in the Franco. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He was number two to Franco. So just go figure. <laughs> so again, going back to this, it's, he was saying that the union, you know, that was trying to... That was like the umbrella for all of the unions in Spain, which was Comisiones Obreras. Y algunas organizaciones políticas eh, condenaron el secuestro... And they, they, they condemned the kidnapping alongside some other political organizations. Sin embargo, en el obrero, eh, However, in the workers' movement itself, entre los se vivía de una forma se veía... it was seen in, the, in a different light, you know, from in, in the workers, like 
you know, boots on the ground, it was seen in a very different way. Y ETA en aquellos momentos se veía como un movimiento que seguía y que empujaba en la misma dirección. So ETA was seen as a movement that was following and pushing in the same direction as them. That's, that's how they saw ETA back in 1973. And that's very important because the, the organization was changing through time. And there were uh, a lot of decisions that we're going to see a little bit later. Es decir, luchar contra la dictadura, luchar por... They were fighting against dictatorship. Las reivindicaciones democráticas por una... And they were struggling, they were, they were fighting for, for democratic reivindications. Democracia plena y... Full democracy. Por los intereses de los trabajadores y trabajadoras. And for the interests of the, of the workers. A partir de aquí, en la propia ETA se irán materializando dos corrientes de opinión divergente. So from here on, in, in ETA itself, there will be uh, two different branches of, of opinion, which are like super key, because one wanted to separate the political from the military, and the other one wanted the political and the military to be the same. Una que considera que las acciones armadas deben ser realizadas en apoyo de las luchas de masas, y otra que encuentra justificación al activismo armado en sí mismo. So there, there's one branch that says that the, that the armed conflict needs to serve the working class and the, and the mass movements, and the other one justifies the, the armed struggle by itself. And that's going to be the problem. That's going to be the problem. That's, that's going to be what changes ETA. Because uh, one, uh, this one faction that wanted, you know, the... the the, the armed struggle to favor the, the, the working class and the masses, that's, that's not the one that's going to win. And at some point, it's going to be, it's going to become a professional type of thing. And that's, that's, that's when trouble is going to arise. But at, and back in 1973, ETA were fighting against the Franco regime. Basically, it was the, the, one, of the, one of the biggest dangers that the, Vasco, that the Franco regime was facing along with the Maquis and with the dissidents uh, outside of their borders which they couldn't do anything about like the Maquis were barely exterminated there were there were still people you know Maquis were people who were in the mountains you know resisting and doing like, guerrilla tactics guerrilla tactics i'm going to i'm going to try and correct you all anglos into making saying guerrilla instead of guerrilla <laughs> guerrilla tactics okay como elemento que provoca las disensiones internas en el régimen y por tanto lo debilita. Estos planteamientos irán produciendo lentamente un alejamiento entre el frente obrero y el frente militar de ETA. So there's these, these, you know, there, there's this, there, there's going to be a split between the worker, working class uh, movement within ETA and the, the purely military movement in ETA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you need to leave. Okay, aspavientos, nos vemos. Mwah, besote. Worry about Brenda. I hope they didn't get the impression that we're un uncritically supporting ETA. Yeah, absolutely. That's, you know, it's like when, when you read the headline and have a good one. Mwah, besote, abrazo. Have a good one, aspavientos. So, yeah, I mean, there's always critical support. And uh, even criti criticism, you know, there, it's it was a very controversial movement, and we're not, you know, <laughs> in the case of Carrero Blanco, <laughs> I mean, the cruelty of the man and the cruelty of of the institution he represented, it need it needed to be done. It sucks, it sucks, okay, but it needed to be done. But it, now that you look at it in hindsight, you know, with a with a per, uh, historical perspective, of of course you're gonna cheer for that because that motherfucker was dangerous to millions of people, forty fucking million people. You know, it was it's it's ridiculous. These moralistic things, you know, I, I'm I'm all for for including you know moral judgment into into the um, into the discourse, but you gotta see you gotta see things in context. It's like poor fascist. How how did they kill Hitler? How are you celebrating the death of Hitler? <laughs> it's like of course we celebrate the death of Hitler. How can you be so cruel to 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 the German soldiers in the concentration camps? But you know, it's it's fine, you know. I don't know. We can we can talk about it, okay? But yeah, really don't worry about it. It's fine. It'll be fine, don't worry. So there's the split. This split is important. It's super key for the history of things. 
So these are ETA soldiers training in the countryside. The bishops in Nafarroa, they condemn this fact. The Sin embargo, kidnapping. So, but there are where, like 20 uh, bishops in Nafarroa who signed a different, different statement. El hecho del secuestro del señor Huarte ha sido tratado exhaustivamente por todos los que hoy y aquí pueden hablar en público. The fact of the kidnapping of Mr. Ugarte was treated by all of us here who can and should speak in public. Autoridades civiles y religiosas. Civilian and religious authorities alike. Votación, obispado, alcaldía, han con... Government, the bishops and the, the mayor. El acto de violencia que supone secuestrar a una persona. They have all condemned the act of violence that, that constitutes the act of kidnapping a person. But they haven't said a word about the violence that oppresses the people. Ni de las que han este acto and of the circumstances that have uh, provoked this violent act. That's important, I would say. Oh, Incluso el obispado, eh? Y estaba entonces de obispo uno, un obispo que era muy aceptable, como la Rauri. And even the, you know, the bishops had a really bad reaction, even when they have this guy, Arrauri, who was a bishop who uh, apparently was kind of agreeable. Pero claro, el juego tampoco era el mismo, el de un obispo y el, de, y el nuestro, ¿no? But a bishop's game is not the same as our game. This guy is also a, an old militant of ETA. Y me acuerdo que la comentaron como muy mal, el vicario general que ya no vive y con todos los respetos recuerdo que dijo que nosotros, en la jerga que había entonces litúrgica, ¿no? el paso de la palabra, de la parte de la palabra a la misa, pues a la misa propiamente dicha era el paso de la palabra al rito, ¿no? y que nosotros, la expresión que empleó fue muy curiosa, pero dijo que nosotros habíamos hecho una, en vez de un paso al rito, que habíamos pasado al reto. So, yeah, he was saying that, you know, going from, from the words that you need to say on, on your life than the words that you need to say on the job. And uh, he was saying that, we're, we're, you know, from the word to the ritual. And he was saying instead of the ritual, they were saying the, the, the uh, challenge, el reto. So they were, they were really challenging society in a way. And it was these conversations they had with these, these bishops. Habíamos hecho el paso al reto, porque era una carta, una humilidad como muy dura, como muy directa. Me acuerdo un... It was a very direct and very tough uh, communique from, from, yeah, from the bishops. ...fondo del, del argumento que hacíamos, porque reaccionaron contra el secuestro de Duarte, pues eh, el gobernador de entonces, el... el, el Alcalde de entonces y el obispo de entonces. And they were, they were, you know, back in the day, the, the, the mayor, the governor, and the bishop, you know, were reacting neg negatively to it back in the day. Y nosotros hicimos un argumento como muy curioso. Decíamos que ninguno de los tres podía hablar demasiado, pues, en, de eso, o decir eso, porque ninguno de los tres representaba al pueblo, supuesto que no había sido esto elegido por el pueblo. And the, the, their counter argument was uh, very funny because they were they were saying that none of the none of those people represented the people because none of them were elected by the people because there were there was no democracy you know it was the dictatorship of General Franco the motherfucker the piece of shit the absolute piece of shit fascist piece of shit General Franco who will be remembered in history as one of the worst anti-human pieces of shit. El obispo montó un poco en cólera y dijo que eso era, teológicamente hablando, que eso era una blasfemia. Porque... The, the bishop was a little bit angry uh, because he was saying that that was basically blasphemy, right? El obispo no tiene por qué recibir el nombramiento de, del pueblo. Pero... Because the bishop needs not be appointed by the people. Fuck your bishops. Así lo pusimos ya, y así costará, me imagino que en la historia también. That's how we wrote it down and that's how it would be in history as well. El Partido Nacionalista Vasco tercia en la polémica criticando a los obispos y hace pública una nota en la que entendiendo que el llamamiento a la liberación de Huarte forma parte de su acción pastoral. Su voz... So, the, 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 the nationalist, the, the nationalist uh, Basque, country, Basque Party, the PNV, 
Partido Nacionalista Vasco, which are like the conservative but independentist uh, party. They, we, because every every independentist movement has like a, a right wing and a left wing type of party. So there, there are these conservatives that were deeply religious and they were criticizing these bishops who wrote this letter about the conditions, you know, of oppression and the violence that it was. And they were saying that the, 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 the work of the church was working for the liberation of, the, of this, uh, of this uh, bourgeois piece of trash. La autorizada debió alzarse ante hechos recientes ocurridos en su misma archidiócesis, como son el asesinato de los jóvenes John Boycochea y Juan Antonio Arango. And they were uh, also criticizing the hypocrisy of the bishop of, of uh, not opposing, you know, the, um, the, the, the murder of, of two young kids not, not long ago. Pero el movimiento obrero Navarro no ha alcanzado todavía su cima. But the workers' movement in Navarra has not reached its peak just yet. El año 1973, los trabajadores navarros hacen una vez más de pioneros abriendo cauces de lucha e inéditos hasta entonces en el estado. So in 1973, the workers in Navarra they they make uh, they break new ground in the in the worker struggle that was never seen before uh, during the dictatorship that is. A principios de mayo de 1973, comienza una huelga en motor ibérica como colofón a dos años de tensión. So, after two years of tensions, there, there's a, in, in May 1973, they, they, the, the, the workers of motor ibérica uh, were, were starting a, an unprecedented, uh, unprecedented strike. Como muestra de solidaridad, se llama al paro general que es seguido unánimemente. As a show of solidarity, there is a call for a general strike that is followed right away. So all of these, uh, in all of these territories, uh, Huarte, you know, and uh, they were, they were, they were following the strike in all of these places. You know, they were, you know, it was solidarity was operating. Se extiende a las poblaciones de Irún, Zubito, Duarte, Esteño, Tafalla, Lumpier, Al. So, yeah, all of these, uh, yeah, uh, all of these localities, they get, you know, the, 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 the strike and the movement is extended to all of these localities, which are basically, yeah, Nafarroa. Y gana a la totalidad de las capas de la población. And it gets to the, the whole of the population, all of the layers of the population. Paran los administrativos. Los pequeños comerciantes no abren sus tiendas en señal de solidaridad. So administratives go on strike and small business owners close the door as a sign of solidarity. Los bares mantienen las puertas cerradas. Por... Bars also close. Primera vez desde la guerra civil. La huelga en Navarra es general. So from from the first time for the first time since the civil war or you know as we as we like to call it here the extermination war carried on by the fascist uh, on their political opponents uh, after a failed uh, attempt of coup d'etat uh, it was the first time since then that the that the there was a general strike in in Nafarroa El arzobispo de Pamplona permite a los huelguistas de motor ibérica que se reúnan en la iglesia de San Salvador. Des so the archbishop of of Navarra uh, of Navarra uh, allows the workers of of motor ibérica to uh, hold meetings in this church of San Salvador. Escribiéndolos como un grupo de hombres honrados y pacíficos cuyo comportamiento dentro del templo ha sido irreprochable. And he received them as the peaceful and, and ordered men, orderly men who, who, whose behavior inside of the, uh, of the church was absolutely undisputable. They're decent men. Sounds like, yeah, praxis, always, good old strikes. You know the drill. Nice music. I hope I don't get a copyright thing because of the really nice music. Really nice guitar, arpeggios, electric guitar on the, on the, um, <laughs> on the fingerboard uh, pickup. Tan importante es el conflicto. 
que la Diputación Foral de Navarra ofrece empleo a los 14 despedidos. The conflict is so important that the, even the, the government of Navarra, uh, the Foral, which is, you know, it, it, Navarro had always like its own government, even during the Franco dictatorship, because they hold like very old treaties that go back to the Middle Ages, the Fueros, they, they call them, right? So, yeah, uh, they offer jobs to the to the 15 striking workers in in, in the factory just to, just to finish the conflict, you know, because it, it keep, keeps growing, it keeps getting out of hand. El Consejo de Empresarios de Navarra fuerza a la dirección de Motor Ibérica a hacer concesiones. And the Council of Entrepreneurs of, Nav of Navarroa, they force the Motor Ibérica to make some concessions in their negotiations. Por su intransigencia, está poniendo en peligro los intereses de conjunto del empresariado navarro. Because they're being so intransigent that their, 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 you know, their stubbornness is, is putting in danger the, the, the interest of the whole uh, entrepreneurship uh, class in, in Navarroa. Basically, you know, things are getting big. Hola, señor rojo. Welcome, welcome. We're talking about we're talking about ETA and their relationship with the working class in in this case in Nafarroa. Well, we're making a little bit of analysis of the of how you know controversial violence can be and become, and it's around the circumstances that took to the to the execution of uh, uh, the right hand of the dictator back in 1973 uh, called Carrero Blanco, who was our first, um, uh, our first man put in orbit by the ETA space agency. Nice music. Durante el año 1973, reina la calma que presagia la tormenta. So the calm before the storm is raining in ETA during 1973. This is, you know, something was cooking. You know, things were, you know, quiet, considering you know, not many kidnappings, not many things. After, after this, uh, this uh, yeah, this boss's kidnapping, uh, things went a little bit quiet, a little bit off. The Sin grid. embargo, en la primavera, Eustaquio Mendizábal, más conocido por Chiquilla, murió de un tiro en la sien cerca de la estación de Algorta. Okay, they they killed Chiquilla. Uh, uh, they killed him. Uh, they shot him in the in 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 the head uh, in uh, in Algorta. So basically, you know, he was a militant and he was shot by the by the police, probably. A las seis y media de la tarde del 19 de abril de 1973. 19th of April, uh, 1973, six, half past six in the afternoon. Había cogido en Bilbao el tren que le llevaba a Plencia y se despidió de dos amigos un día gris. He got the train that was taking him to Palencia. He said goodbye to his friends in a great day. Con un aire pesado y respirable. The air was heavy and difficult to breathe. En este Bilbao sucio todavía vamos a morir. In this dirty Bilbao, we're still gonna die, basically. Eustaquio Mendizábal, alias, a.k.a. Chiquilla, who was murdered uh, by the fascists because he was a militant of, you know. Yeah, Larkbark is Mr. Red, Señor Rojo, as I always like to say. <laughs> and this is the, the clandestine uh, newspaper of ETA says Chiquilla died in combat, which is, I don't know, yeah. Uh, it was very unilateral combat. He was managed, you know, managing his business, and and they shot him in the head, the back of the head, to be more, pre more precise. This, this this is like a news type of music. Yes, yeah, that's the funeral of Chiquia. La prensa del régimen canta victoria una vez más y anuncia la definitiva desarticulación de ETA. So with this comrade killed and the other comrade, you know, being arrested, it's like the, the, the fascist regime were very victorious and, you know, publishing in, in their press, you know, like uh, uh, 
you can actually watch a finished dinner. Oh yeah, cool, cool. This is a nice documentary. I'm gonna. There's gonna be. There's gonna be. This is gonna be available for a few days uh, uh, because I activated the Twitch time of thing type of thing. But I'm also gonna upload it to YouTube. And if you're watching YouTube, you know you can catch me later on on Twitch. I'm gonna be more or less more or less online. I'm hoping you can catch us live. It's, you know, part participate in the chat. I'm so glad that you've been listening. Now you can watch as well. I'm gonna move on the documentary. So basically, you know, the the, the fascists were were very very happy. You know that they were, they 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 killed one and captured another comrade. You know, and they were like, ah, Eta is done. <laughs> Good luck with that, motherfuckers. <laughs> And that's the funeral of Chiquilla. That's the funeral of Chiquilla. He was killed by the fascist Frank Franco regime because he belonged to an armed organization called ETA. <laughs> Pero esta relativa en actividad es debida principalmente a los preparativos para la celebración de la sexta asamblea de But this lack of activity is actually due to the preparations of the sixth assembly of ETA. So, do you want there was a there was a decrease in activity because they were up to big plans. Esta se celebra en el exterior en agosto de 1973. Predominio de militantes del so they celebrate the, this assembly in, you know, abroad, with a, with most of the militants participating being from from within the territory. There's a group in Belgium that defends like more uh, uh, anarchistic um, uh, postures and you know positions. Queda fuera de la organización. They get kicked out of the organization. <laughs> se acepta la reivindicación de la independencia que se califica de necesaria para la salvación vital del pueblo vasco. But they accept the reivindication of the independence of the Basque country which they deem necessary for the Basque people. What, what are you up to? What are you up to? <laughs> oh, you, you gifted another sub. So cool to Mr. Red. You got the emote. The, the, the one emote I have, I, I made the, some other emotes, okay? It's just, <laughs> Twitch doesn't let me m get more emotes on. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on it, okay? Pure evil, yeah. He was, Franco was pure, pure evil. He was aligned with the Catholic Church. Yeah, the Catholic Church and, and Franco were, were in cahoots. Because the Spanish Catholic Church may, had a very vital role in the in the extermination war that followed the failed attempt of coup d'état, that some uh, official uh, sources like to call uh, Spanish civil war for some reason, which was not doesn't you know doesn't uh, meet the requirements for a civil war. But yeah, continuing. So this assembly was celebrated. They kicked off the anarchists, and they moved to to the reivindication of the independence. No ideological definitions were given in this assembly, just kicking off the anarchists. They postponed the ideological definition to, to whatever happened two years after that assembly, to see, you know, how it goes. Se establece cierta coordinación entre el Frente Militar y la organización política. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Realm Knights. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and if I, if I, you know, I get more icons going. I got a couple of designs ready. It's just I cannot upload it yet, but yeah, all in good time. It, it'll happen. <laughs> Oh, oh no, no! I won't ignore you. I, nobody gets ignored in here. I, and and for whatever reason I miss you, uh, 
uh, it's because I'm, I'm lacking uh, in attention and capacity, but however I can, I'll try to engage you in, in the best way I can, because come on, I'm, I'm here speaking with a freaking microphone and you all are, you know, doing whatever you can to type. So I, I owe you this courtesy, uh, at least, to worry about your, your good people. Yeah, but yeah, in, in time, in time, as, as you, you also say, Mr. Red. But yeah, there's no, okay, no, no uh, ideological definition, right? So. Aunque en la práctica no se consigue, y el frente militar cobra una autonomía real. And the military front keeps growing, and it's growing its own autonomy. autonomy. It's, uh, you know, uh, as a matter, ma well, theoretically, they still have a political branch. The military uh, faction gets its own de facto uh, autonomy. Which I think it was the main problem with ETA, you know, with the, when the military front grew so much and got detached from the ide ideological front, which is something, you know, it's, I think it's a learning opportunity right now, right here. Las posturas de los que defienden una única organización político-militar y la de los que propugnan dos organizaciones, una política y otra militar, completamente independientes, empiezan a bifurcarse. So again, another decision between those who are, uh, advocate for, for uh, the, the split of the military on one side and the political on the other, so they could, you know, left hand doesn't know what right hand does, and those who want, you know, the whole thing put together, they start splitting again. And that's one of the problems, you know, because ETA is born with a, with a, you know, from a working class perspective. Uh, yeah, HVAD, I know the drill. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're, we're all, we're all HVAD here, good people. It is what it is. But, you know, it's, it's one of the most problematic things I see with ETA is that it started off as a workers organization revolutionary organization you know trying to split the Basque country from Francoist uh, totalitarian regime and fight and defeat the totalitarian regime of Franco which was you know the the, the military part you know the, all the murders all the kidnappings it was the one thing that had them trembling that had them really you know that really defied their power and it sucks because it's ugly it's ugly, you know, there's a lot of violence, there's a lot of really awful things going on in there. But on the other hand, is the, is the only thing that could dispute the fascistic authoritarian power of the Franco regime. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's the only thing that had them cornered. I mean, well, not the only thing, because the, the workers' movement was also growing uh, like fungi. But, you know, to the workers' movement, they, they, can, they had like these very powerful uh, companies that were owned by, by these very powerful families that were in cahoots with the dictator, that had nobility titles uh, delivered to the dictator, that had the same people are, that are still, you know, the richest people in this country. And, um, and they, they have the power. And they still have the power. But the, the and and they 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 could really uh, take a pass on the on the on the on the good old and good fashioned uh, bargaining, you know, because yeah, general strikes, you know, they they're fantastic, but diversity of tactics is in general a uh, rule of thumb is good good strategy, if you know what I mean. And it sucks. It sucks. Violence, violence sucks. I'm I'm not suited to do violence myself. I'm 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 weak as fuck, you know. But but you know, there's a lot of people out there who are absolutely buffed and really prepared to do that shit, and they should do it, you know. But avoiding this this type of splits in a way that the military faction goes like, oh, we're independent now, we're powerful. Fuck you. And it's like, no, the, the point, what, you, what you're fighting for is the liberation of the people. So listen to the political faction as well. And listen to the people in the organization, whether they're military or not. You know, and uh, that's, that's something that needs to get into everybody's heads. That everything needs to be intertwined for, and we need to not, you know, n n keep our eyes on the ball, right? A lot of fascist dictators were in cahoots. Yeah. And had ties with the church, yeah, and and the private sector, 
Yeah, fear Christ and Christ, Christ of fascist. Yeah. We can do so much better than, than Joe Biden. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. Electoral politics, they go as far as they go, to, to be honest. You know, Black Lives Matter, it has more weight than any Joe Biden's. Or, or, I don't know, you know. se mantienen unidas aún ante el Frente Obrero. So th both of them are still united back in 73. But there, there's this split that is starting to manifest that would later on, you know, create a, a big problem there within the organization. A lot of people would leave the organization because of that. And the, and the, the, the military people would start hiring more and more mercenaries. And that would, you know, the whole thing will be lost. You know, the, the violence will become business. And they, st they stop being like a, a force for change and they will start, you know, being uh, extortionists, basically, which is, you know. Yeah, Biden is Catholic, you know. But... Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, ha happy, happy Puritan. This is about uh, ETA, the the armed nationalist uh, arm uh, movement that some some people like to label as terrorist um i would say you know they were terrorists but again then again uh, the term terrorist was you know the significance of the term terrorist and uh, there would be terrorist in the most technical meaning of the way uh, of the word but at the same time they were the only ones who were facing the franco regime uh, they were really debilitating the franco regime and we'll see how very soon but there was this split that was happening, you know, that would be the demise of, of ETA as a, as a useful thing for, for a revolution. It was one of the things, or it was one of the downfalls of the, of the recent Spanish history, to be honest. Because it would be used as a boogeyman by, by, the, by the politicians, you know? It would defeat the purpose eventually. But as for 1973, they were still united, okay? So at the, at the at, towards the end of the year, the first symptoms of uh, of uh, the activism taking taking uh, getting in, getting in, into motion again are are being perceived. So there's, there's, there, there you go. Sorry, I'm translating off the cuff right now. Okay, that's an M16. Where would that come from? I don't know. An M16 in, in 70s Spain. El 6 de diciembre de 1973, momentos antes de la muerte de José Echeverría. Then December 6th, 1973, uh, moments before the death of José Echeverría. José Luis Pagazautundúa. And José Luis Pagazautundúa. La explosión incendia el club en el que se reúne la más encopetada sociedad vizcaína. There's an explosion in, in the club where the m most high-class uh, society in Biscay uh, are meeting. Let's read those comments. Uh, fundamentalists in the American uh, protest ascents are rarely actually a political group in the neo-evangelicals. Yeah, but, you know, evangelicals uh, are very... They're more concerned with uh, they're they're very similar to fascists in a way that they're they're more concerned with power than anything else. Neo evangelicals were a response to supposed fundamentalist apathy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the United States have the very different circumstances than than seventy Spain for sure. I mean, you know, this is a learning opportunity, so you can learn a little bit of of what went on during those years and how this is modifying the way of the of our locality better and also you know to try, try and extract some lessons learned and people are eating uh, are, are settling for less by choosing biden because they want trump out of office yeah basically that's it that's i, I mean that's what they're doing they, they did the switcheroo you know with uh with uh um, with bernie sanders and uh, they did the switch your own purpose because if you get you know if you get the discourse of change to go way too far, eh, they're they're going to lose their privilege. And, and it's uh, for me, the Democratic Party and the and the Republican Party are playing like good cop and bad cop with the with the United States society. And uh, the religious right are very much uh, tied to you know new the new ways of fascism. 
but you know uh, the same as as the 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 ones in germany were tied to their own you know religious pseudo religious uh, pagan um, magic uh, cult the, the 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 evangelical church are right now you know uh, in charge or say like the ideological or religious support of uh, Of far of the far right, not just in the United States. I mean, check Bolivia, for instance, and check check Brazil. I mean, really, I mean, one of the things that that people in the United States need to do a lot is just check outside the country, check political and and socioeconomical circumstances outside the country because it it can give all of us a perspective. I think you know some of some of us have like a more are more used to have our eyes in different parts of the world at, at once which gives you gives you a lot of perspective for sure you know towards proper analysis and whatnot and figuring out s solutions you know because sometimes you know we we tend to focus too much on our on our own which is is cool you know to figure out our own puzzle but you, sometimes pieces from uh, from other localities can help you get a different perspective to find solutions if you know what i'm saying So yeah, I would say that's uh, easier for a separatist group to be nationalist and leftist. Yeah, of course, because the relation, um, the relation, uh, colonized to col colonizer, right? That's those are, but it's a rule of thumb as well. You we need to analyze each case. Groups seeking independence from a colonial power, like the Irish, the Algerians, yeah, and Ghana, yeah, right on. Yeah, those are those are absolute examples, you know, of. of Colonized people, you know, seeking for liberation. That's a quote-unquote good nationalism, you know. And again, you know, everything with a pinch of salt. And uh, we, I would need more information, you know, to make a, an actual judgment or what, whatever, you know. But, you know, critical support for sure, if you know what I mean. So evangelicals are at the break between fundamentalists and evangelicals was one of the how involved they should be in the world. I'm sorry, I didn't get that sentence so much. But yeah, I mean, the evangelical church are really up to no good. And yeah, the cir circumstances of fascists in Europe are different. I mean, and the new manifestations of fascism have their own uh, peculiarities that we need to observe and analyze and figure out how to undo them. Which, of course, you know, uh, one of the characteristics of, of any fascism is that they're trying to show force. The, the theory of the strong man and the strong people. So you need to really fight them with, with force and mostly at the beginning so they don't, you know, get too much power, which may be a little bit late in the case of the United States. But then again, uh, Trump and his things, you know, are, they, they chose such a clownish uh, type of brand that I think is going gonna, is gonna to deflate by, by, by its own... You know, but what I'm worried about is it's the rest of the military and and everybody else in the in the in the in the, in the state apparatus that are not elected, because Trump is just a face. It's basically, you know, it's a crook. Mm -hmm, the church in America isn't a single institution. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of you know, black national churches are very much allied with the Democratic Party. Yeah which is uh, right-wing, but isn't fascist. Yeah, that's, that's different, you know? It's, it, it, right now, the Democratic Party are, are basically uh, representing the, the, the traditional left, what used to... Uh, the, uh, the traditional right, sorry about that. Uh, the, the, uh, the traditional right, the right that was like, mm, let's keep private business as well, but let's, let's throw you guys a little bit, some crumbs. It's, it's, and it's fine, you know? Let them eat cake like, like, um, like Marie Antoinette, right? I mean, the Roman Catholic Church, yeah. Okay, so it should be understood that in America, fundamentalists and the evangelical are two distinct groups. Okay, yeah, it could be. I mean, fundamentalist is, is... Fundamentalist is a very broad term. It's a very umbrella term. Neoliberalism or classical liberalism. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're screwed anyway in any of those. Okay, going back to it, okay? Back to subject. El club marítimo de Labra. So they, they blew up this, uh, yeah, this maritime club where the high society, they blew it up. They blew it up to dust. They had to rebuild it all the way. In 
el Hotel Orlin de San Sebastián estalla otro artefacto. Another bomb happened in the in Hotel Orly in San Sebastián, another, you know, another exclusive club for rich people. En Beasain, vuela al explotar una carga de dinamita el coche de un guardia civil. They blow up uh, the car of a, of, a, of a cop, basically. Guardia civil is well, like the militarized police in Spain. It's a very specific... But basically, yeah, it was like they represented for the for the Basque people to represent the colonizing force in a way. So they blow up this this guy's car with dynamite. In Oyarzun, estalla una bomba en un bar de confidentes. And in Oyarzun, they they blow a bomb in a in a bar where where the snitches used to hang, basically. Back to Carrero Blanco. This is the explosion of of Carrero Blanco. This is the one that got our first presidential representation in, in space. Esta fase culmina con una acción que va a modificar profundísimamente la evolución y el futuro del régimen franquista. So this phase really uh, ends uh, with a with a, another, you know, different different phase of, of 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 this this is like a defining moment that changes, you know, the the next stage in in the Francoist regime and and, and in their opposition. La muerte en atentado el 20 de diciembre de 1973. Uh, what you're seeing back then, by the way, all of that, that's the tunnel that they had to dig underground. All of the, all of the stuff there, that's the tunnel they had to dig underground. El 20 de diciembre de 1973 del presidente del gobierno. So yeah, that's, uh, they're talking about, you know, the, the changing uh, event, which was the death in this, in this, uh, in this attack on the on the president Carrero Blanco in December 20th 1933 Luis Carrero Blanco Yeah that's a motherfucker They they make a huge mess it was a big 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 bomb Carrero Blanco brazo derecho de Franco desde 1940 y garantía de la continuidad del franquismo. So he was the right, the right hand of Franco since 1940, and he was the guarantee of continuity of Francoism. Había sido nombrado vicepresidente del gobierno en 1967. He was appointed a president of the government in 1967. He's the guy kneeling in front of the Christ uh, image, a guy in the glasses, very powerful eyebrows, uh, which didn't probably help his ascend into space. Uh, the first, uh, uh, the first was the modernist fundamentalist split of the issues of miracles. Ah, well, you were talking about Calvin and all that, yeah. FLQ, yeah, man, a little bit, you know. It's just, uh, de Muñoz Grandes. He replaced this other guy, Muñoz Grandes. Another fascist, to be honest, but, you know, maybe two older fascists. Whoops, whoops, there you go. And they, this motherfucker looking to the side, that's General Franco as in his old age. Fuck him and his memory and may he rot in hell. I think it was the disembocation of a normal process. So this was, this was developed as a regular process, he says. That is, the President Carrero Blanco was first Subsecretary of the President. Admiral Carrero Blanco was first the subsecretary of the presidency. Sin ser ministro. Without being, without going through being a minister. Luego pasó a ser ministro de la presidencia. Then he happened to become the minister of presidency. Um, luego fue vicepresidente del gobierno. And he became a vice president of the government. This was like very fast. He got, got promoted very fast because, you know, promotions under fascist regimes and all kinds of authoritarian structures, they happen, you know. They're appointed. They're not elected. Entonces, creo que estaba cantado, digamos, en una expresión vulgar. So it, it, they, they saw it coming, uh, you know, that he would be appointed a president of the, of the government eventually. Sí, el primer presidente. Uh, del gobierno en vida de Franco iba a ser él. So, yeah, he was going to be the first president of the government well, while Franco was alive. El primero de mayo de 1973, el policía Martínez es muerto en Madrid. Uh, May 1st, 1973, they killed uh, this policeman uh, in Madrid. 
según la versión oficial, por militantes del FRAP. According to the, to the official version uh, by militants of the FRAP, FRAP is Frente Revolucionario... Ego. FRAP, Frente Revolucionario Antifascista y Patriota, which is, this is their logo. And they were like Marxist, Leninist, uh, anti-fascist, uh, uh, also terrorist group, they call them, you know, it's, uh, they were revolutionary people, also in, in arms against uh, fascism. Uh, I think there was an English article for it. Ah, there you go. Revolutionary anti-fascist patriotic front. That's the FRAP. There you go. Hola, Johnny. Hola, Johnny de Su. Bienvenido. So, yeah. Uh, okay, continuing. So they, they pinned this, this one death of this cop on the FRAP. Fuerzas de extrema derecha se manifiestan llevando pancartas en las que se lee. They're not doing the, the fascist salute, okay? They're just itchy on their armpits. <laughs> they need to air those armpits. That's the problem, okay? There, there, was, there was fascist protests, and that's, that's one of the keys to understand today's Spain. It's like the Franco regime, uh, as they carried on uh, cleansing of, of dissidents, by killing or or a killing, uh, imprisoning, or forcing to exile millions of, of people who didn't think like them. The rest were forged in, in decades of, of terror. So there were a lot of obedient people who were conforming to the fascist system. And they were strong because... because there was no other way of living in Spain that was, you know, allowed. So everything else had to be underground. And even like that, you know, there were like a lot of revolutionary movements in Spain. So. Basta ya de gobiernos débiles. And they, they, these fascist, uh, pro fascist uh, protesters were saying enough of weak governments. They wanted, you know, more, more repression. And it was savage back, th back then, okay? They wanted harder. That's the slime, the piece of shit, the absolute ghoul, Francisco Franco, a.k.a. Paca la Culona. And that, the, the, the powerful eyebrows, that's our, our spaceman. Carrero Blanco is nombrado el 9 de junio presidente del gobierno. En el cambio ministerial del 12, la representación del Opus Dei queda muy debilitada. So by changing all the ministries and everything, the representation of the Opus Dei, which is this dangerous sect of the Catholic Church funded by uh, Escriba de Balaguer, who was an absolute piece of shit, who was absolute pedophile piece of shit. And um, uh, they were, it's this sect of the Catholic Church that are obsessed with power. They want to enroll uh, everyone with power and both economical and social. And uh, they enlist them. They give. They put uh, their donors in positions of power in exchange. And they. They. Their. Their goal is to control uh, the state behind the scenes. That's. That's how dangerous those fuckers are. And at this change of government, the Opus Dei was losing a little bit of uh, of steam because they were big on Franco's uh, regime during those forty years. Forty fucking years. It just. You know. It, yeah. I think I, that puts it in context. I hope. So many fascists come. Okay, back to more repression. More hardness. La repression alcanza a todo tipo de actividades. So there's an escalation on, on repression. And this motherfucker is uh, Jean Manuel Serrat, who used to be like a, one of ours back in the day. Now he's a sellout and he supports bullfighting. So fuck this guy in his old age. But yeah, he was he was writing. He was a popular pop singer back in the day, and he was singing probably his copyright shit. So I'm gonna, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, this is to avoid copyright, okay? De julio, el cantante catalán Joan Manuel Serrat es conducido al gobierno civil de Pamplona por la policía gubernativa 
So this this guy, after one of his shows in in Nafarroa, in Pamplona, in uh, Iruñea, that's the name of the city. Pamplona, you know them probably. Uh, you all fucking tourists speak of the, the San Fermines, which are cor- really looks like Jim Morrison on stage. Yeah, he wish. <laughs> yeah, he was young, and you know, girls really liked him. So. Uh, but yeah, fuck, uh, by the way, fuck the San Fermines because it's uh, animal cruelty and we don't support animal cruelty on the on this channel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was. I mean, he he uh, girls used to like him. Uh, all the uh, girls from the generation of my mom were really uh, into this guy. Uh, yeah, they had the hots for him. Okay, that's it is what it is. So this guy was was taken. He was arrested by the police. Al finalizar su actuación en una sala de fiestas de la ciudad. So right after the show in one of the one of these smaller venues in this in the city of Iruñea, uh, aka Pamplona, you know that. Yada yada. Y haber hecho referencia a las huelgas que en aquellos días se extienden por la región. So he was arrested because he me, he he mentioned some of the strikes, you know, during his his show, and he was arrested because of that. Yahoo! Freedom! <laughs> Gonna try and copyright. Copyright! Because these, these ghoul. This guy right, today is a ghoul. And, uh, and he probably is way, way into copyright. But I'm, I'm, okay, I miss some, I miss some of the. Which. To, uh, July 2nd? So, July 2nd, he's saying, okay? July 2nd. So, El 2 de julio se celebra en Santander el Consejo de Guerra contra los supuestos responsables del secuestro del industrial Huarte. So, on 2nd of July, there is this uh, war council, which is like a like a trial, but but military trial, okay? For these people who kidnapped uh, Ugarte. El tribunal está presidido por el coronel del regimiento de infantería San Marcial. Yeah, some big uh, military guy was presiding the tribunal. Como defensores actúan los abogados Ruiz Severio, Castells, Pagués y Fernando Mujica del Colegio de San Sebastián. And he had some, they had some lawyers involved. Y Muro, Melaza y Urbiola del Colegio de Pamplona. Quédese. So guys from Donostia, which is in the Basque country uh, as we know it right now, and uh, some people from, some other lawyers from uh, the, the, the uh, Attorney College of uh, Pamplona. Consejo de Guerra eh, lo inicié defendiendo a cinco procesados. So he started his career and he's a... Uh... Yeah, copyright is a terror right now on these platforms. These platforms are like... Uh, they're like... Uh, yeah, they're absolutely exploitative. Like, really, fuck, fuck Eggman. Eggman can suck it and YouTube can suck it as well. And Google, you know, it's, just, it's absolutely... Uh, horrendous. So this guy started his career doing this defense in this uh, military trial. En el acto de la vista, defendí a dos. Y acab- so he defended two of them during the the initial the initial statements. Fue procesado. And he ended up he ended up uh, he ended up being accused and he was processed because of defending because of being a, a lawyer. That that's how crazy the the Spanish dictatorship was. Eh, con orden de búsqueda y captura, lo cual provocó para primero mi detención primera. El... He was he was put on on uh, on a seek and, and and capture order and then he was arrested. Basically, he was yeah. El mismo mes de agosto del 73 y August 73. So it's the same year after one month, you know, got captured. Y posterior paso de frontera hacia los hacia el exilio. And he ended up exiled when, you know, he escaped and went to exile because he couldn't, you know, he couldn't be a, f- a freaking lawyer. <laughs> La correspondiente orden de búsqueda y captura y petición fiscal de 16 años, recuerdo. They were, they were, they were asking for 17 years. The, the attorney was, was, <laughs> was asking for 17, 17 years. So he was under, under capture orders, uh, while he was in exile, it, it's and that's 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 the absurdity of, of fascism. Y cosa que naturalmente no resultaba nada agradable. It wasn't super appetizing, he says. Eh, aceptar. 
por lo tanto cogí el camino del monte y so he got he, he hit the road y a esperar a la muerte del dictador and let's wait for the death of the dictator el proceso se siguió bueno muy normal digamos eh, dentro de lo que es la de lo que era la jurisdicción militar so it was it was an average process considering it was mili military jurisdiction y como nota destacar el final el final fue realmente the, the, the end of the trial was worth noting it was really no sé cómo calificarlo pero no no apoteósico pero he's having a hard time you know putting a pin on what what the adjective for it but he was not really apotheosic but a lo mejor en esa línea no but along those lines more or less los procesados eh, renunciaron gritaron se formó un considerable escándalo the accused were you know denouncing and, and chanting and making a, a riot basically y, y bueno y así terminó el and that was it eso, la sentencia condenatoria prácticamente a las mismas penas que había solicitado el auditor militar. So they basically automatically, almost automatically, you know, the process went to, you know, condemn these people. They were absolutely 16 años, creo que era alguien 15, 10, 16 or 15 years. 6, 20 hasta 30. 20 up to 30 years sentences. El año 1900... That was Carabanchel. My dad was in that jail. Se ve también sacudido por un amplio movimiento de los presos antifranquistas que protestan contra unas condiciones de vida deplorables. And uh, in 1973, also the prisoners in, 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 in prisons were uh, organizing towards the deplorable conditions that were suffering agravadas por una política de represión y persecución. Of course, the, the repression and prosecution, you know, con continuous uh, repressive policies of, of the state weren't, weren't really helping. They were making things worse. Este movimiento de protesta y rebelión será secundado más tarde desde la cárcel de Zamora. So this, this movement of protest and rebellion would be seconded, uh, started in Caranchel and what would be seconded in the jail in Zamora, which is like many hundreds of kilometers away. De ocho sacerdotes, siete vascos y Francisco García Salve. Eight priests and seven of them who were Basque and were supporting also the, the, the this movement of, of, of the rights of prisoners. A las comisiones obreras purgan largas penas de prisión. Yeah, I mean, you know... <laughs> That's the thing. There was so much organizing because there was so much need and people didn't have Twitter. So they weren't arguing with each other and, and hating each other uh, online. They were just getting their shit together and, and acting. <laughs> Which sucks because I'm on Twitter so much. But I understand, you know, that my responsibility is to, to be a propagandist. So I have to be on them social networks, okay? But try, try to make them as wholesome as possible, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so much going on. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it took months and, and, you know, of constant activity to organize these things. When you watch these things in, in, in hindsight from the historical perspective, everything so, seems so frantic. But these are the actions of a lot of people and, uh, and through a big span of time. So... I mean, months and, you know, so on. Suceden las protestas hasta que el 6 de noviembre de 1973, cuatro de ellos, a fin de llamar la atención, queman sus enseres en señal de protesta. So, protests continue uh, up until this moment where four of them uh, burn their own belongings as a sign of protest. Iniciando una huelga de hambre. And they initiate a hunger strike. Those were jails in Spain in the 70s. They were, yeah. I mean, uh, I've slept in worse places, to be honest. But, you know, the lack of freedom and the, the awful uh, the awful police who were operating those jails was incredibly difficult. Also peeing in, in a bucket or something like that. Yeah, that's fuck. There's more music. Should I get a 
copyright strike? I don't know. This one looks traditional, so it's not. This. Uh, this is Basque again. Euskara. Euskara. So in the first moment, we thought about we wondered about doing a making a, a hole to escape, you know, and they, but it didn't work. So we decided to break the jail and and we started uh, a hunger strike with the decision take it the day came and we destroyed the whole we trashed the the whole jail all right hi how you doing things are all right we're streaming uh yeah i mean considering you know been be making music today by the way uh, i think it's also just that i wish I'd hear more cool stuff like that, yeah, instead of the individual food. That's the, that's the only thing, you know? That's another thing. I think the information flow, we, we get so much access to these data because people can research these data now. None of this, or most of this, wasn't heard back in the day at the same time that it was happening, you know? So, in a way, uh, you know... Um, there's probably a lot of stuff going on right now that we're not knowing. And, you know, knowing about stuff is really cool. But making stuff happen, happen ourselves, it's even cooler. <laughs> you know what I mean? So they, they trash the whole uh, prison and set it on fire. And then we started strike. <laughs> it lasted about 15 days after which we were moved to the infirmary of Carabanchel and they confined us. And they were trusting that everything was fixed and they were, they were going to be moved to other places. We wouldn't go back to Zamora. My dad was in Carabanchel. I remember visiting him. It was a very grim place, to be honest. Uh, but at the meeting of the Council, Minister, Ca Council of Ministers, they decided that we should go back to Zamora and that, that's the way it was. So they went back to Zamora. And here comes the space program. Operación Carrero Blanco empezó antes de terminar el año 1972. So before 1972, uh, so the year before the, the actual facts happened, they started the operation uh, uh, to terminate Carrero. Dos militantes, Pérez Beotegui, Wilson, y Beñarán Ordeñana, Argala, recibieron una confidencia. Wilson and Argala was the, these two militants. Uh, they, rece they received some confidential information. El almirante Carrero Blanco iba todos los días a misa a la iglesia de los jesuitas de Serrano. Eyebrows, spaceman Carrero Blanco, with epic eyebrows and awful demeanor, was going to this mass every day at the same time, uh, in the same place, through the same road. In, in Madrid, estuvimos en total año y medio. They were in Madrid about one and a half years. Oh, what, what are you up to? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, of course, I just meant like, I think it would be doing a lot more. Yeah, absolutely. I understand. I understand, Capricious Nerd. Most of my 20s. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I heard a lot more related to this history of coming organizing and yeah. Well, growing up. Yeah, of course. Of course. But, you know, don't get demotivated. We can do it, okay? Yes, yes. I, I stand with you. 700%. Uh, I know that you mean don't playing collective actions compared to the historic figures. Like presidents, prime ministers, and heirs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right on. We're motivated. That that's right. We stand with you. We stand with all of you. We all stand together. That's that's that that's the point. We all stand together. Okay. I'm super optimist about this. We we shall overcome. So not being conspiratorial, but liberals have been trying to hide that. Yeah, I mean, liberals, uh, liberals, they want things to remain the way they are. So they don't want to change things. They want to change a couple of details, but they want to, you know, they, they cannot even conceive life out, out of capitalism, liberals. You know, they're, they're very comfortable the, the way things are, with the way things are, even when, when they're screwed up like everybody else. 
but they they cannot fathom a world outside of capitalism. They're definitely uh, very sick with capitalist realism, and uh, yeah, I mean, they most of them they mean well. They just cannot imagine. They cannot fathom a world outside of capitalism. I'm I'm talking about liberal everyday normal people. And if we talk about the liberal leadership, which is what, quite different, yeah, they're they're evil, they're fucked up, you know. Same as conservatives, they they want to be in power, they wanna they wanna parasite from us and and enjoy their rush of being super powerful and being on top of things and you know because they think it's their sacred duty or whatever. But at the top tiers, everything everyone is is just thirsty with power and very drunk with all the power they got so far and wanting more. That's about it. The rest is just rhetorics to try and hook us up into their bullshit. But you know, there's no no actual will on 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 behalf of the of the current leadership to to improve anything for anybody. They just want theirs and fuck us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, and let me say it's not a conspiratorial thing. Yeah, definitely not even. I mean, it's spineless liberals. Yeah, <laughs> together we are better. Love the optimism. That's what we need, definitely. Liberals understand that there are problems that they cannot believe the solution is outside capitalism. Absolutely, Aranok. Absolutely. Right on. Leadership is as followers are very different, different behavior. Absolutely. Absolutely. Information, solidarity, compassion. Right on. Right on. We know the drill. We know the drill. We need to affect the change that we want in our world. And we, we cannot do it alone, never alone, never alone, never, never, always with our comrades and always recruiting comrades, you know, and always getting more people in because this is what we are trying to do. And that's one of the things that we never should lose sight. That's one of the problems that I see with ETA in this case, is that we never should lose sight that we are hel here to help, to help people, to make things better. You know, we're not here to to be the, the 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 new king instead of the current king we're here so there's no king so everybody lives in peace and helps each other when everybody's helping everybody and nobody's harming nobody then we have a world that is worth living because then we're going to live in the best quality of life possible all of us and nobody's going to be left behind if you know what I'm saying. But but there are things that are in the way and are the current structures of power that need to be taken down. And we cannot take down the current structures of power with hugs and kisses, alas. And that sucks. It sucks because it defeats our purpose of everybody living in peace and everybody being happy. You know? It defeats... It's 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 a, uh, it's an absolute contradiction. And... and I would even say in the in the Maoist way, but even more con more contrived. It's a very contrived contradiction because there's no, no there's also no single issue with the state and no single issue with the liberation because there it's a complex array of too many issues. And we'll do. I have another <laughs> I have another video waiting here. <laughs> I have another video waiting here with uh, this absolute titan called carlos taibo that we'll we'll see very soon okay but we'll get there when we get there okay uh, <laughs> it, it is very complex there is no simple solution i cannot go come here and tell you a couple of sentences and everything will be all right but i do know that we have the capacity to fix this we have the capacity to move on to the next stage collectively the, the union, uh, the, you know, the simple sentence of the people united will never be defeated. That's a, that's one of the one one little universal truth. That is, it's that that is one of the things that we can hold on to. One of the many things, to be honest, it's not the one thing. It's one of the many things that that are absolutely solid, and it's our union, our unity. But then again, uh, these these this is one of the men uh, that were in the commando uh, in charge of the operation Ogre, and he was staying in Madrid for about a year and a half. Preparando la acción del secuestro de Carro Blanco, que era lo más complicado. So initially, they were planning to kidnap the president, Mr. Eyebrows. Later on, space 
man of of the his testicles were flying very 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 up high in the sky all right uh his fascist testicles were flying very very high and um so let's introduce you to the to the saying we may have to be willing to pick up a weapon uh, to put down weapons yeah yeah and that's that's an objective that we need to have you know when shit goes down you know and it's it's going to be ugly but it's also it's it's just the first half of the work the second half of the work is stopping it from being ugly and that's incredibly difficult and it needs to stop you know the ugliness at some point needs to stop but again you know we're in this catch 22 situation with the with the fascists because they have so much power that we need to oppose them with violence and violence is ugly and it's absolutely against our principles but what do you, what do you do when you need to break out of jail you got to break the jail but but you know when when you're done you need to build a, a a house for everyone to live in in freedom you know you need to uh, this always two forces the destructive and the constructive and at some point hopefully in the future the destructive will not be necessary anymore that you know it's difficult it's, it's so complicated i'm so sorry i don't have many solutions for you <laughs> i'm really trying okay so these people the initial plan was to kidnap the mr eyebrows uh with his with his absolute testicles and genitalia flying up in the sky later on and um uh th the plan was to kidnap him initially okay it was very complicated because like 14 or 15 people were involved into that plan there could be several casualties it was a complicated operation a kidnapping you know the president of the government in a dictatorship it's a tricky operation okay even when they had like this very privileged and very important information that he was you know going to the same place every day at the same time, uh, back and forth. Um, yeah, hope, hopefully they can never rise to power again. Yeah. I'm so creeped out by the mental image of flying fascist testicles. <laughs> They're proverbial. I mean, he had them. They were up in the air. They're probably sweaty and ugly. <laughs> ugly old man's testicles. But, you know, if, if the testicles creep you out, think about the eyebrows. Think about the eyebrows. I'm gonna think about the eyebrows, okay? I mean, those eyebrows. Let me see. Uh, think about those eyebrows. Those are high caliber eyebrows, okay? Those eyebrows are looking at you. Those eyebrows are probably the best thing this this man had, okay? Very thick, very powerful eyebrows. It was probably they were probably his best quality, okay? He was a fascist, obsessed with power, harming people left and right. It didn't matter. But look at those eyebrows, okay? No, no, they were naturally dark. They were very powerful eyebrows. Very powerful eyebrows. So, you know, those eyebrows flying in the sky all the way. Just think about them, okay? So the initial plan was kidnap these eyebrows and the awful man hanging from those glorious eyebrows. But it was very complicated, okay? It involved a lot of people. Very difficult operation and Ca casualties would be expected, including probably the guards, because they the guards wouldn't go down without a fight. Okay. Era muy difícil, sobre todo la infraestructura. Infrastructure was incredibly difficult. Y lo que era difícil hacer relación y salir bien, ¿no? And having the the the, the action to su to succeed, you know, was incredibly complicated. Okay, so that that's what they were pondering back in '72. You know, when they were pre preparing the operation, the year before. It happened. 
mucho más fácil. Would have been much easier to make a suicide action type. Haber matado a Carlo Blanco, si habríamos pensado desde el principio, pues Argala, por ejemplo, estuvo comulgando a la UDEL, podría haber pegado un, dos tiros, nos podíamos saber. So, killing Carrero Blanco, you know, considering Argala, you know, by, by having did something way lesser, he was really condemned, you know, for life. So, it was very difficult. The, the, the penalty was, was too high, the, the stakes were too high. It was very difficult to, you know, lush eyebrows. Marchado tranquilamente. Cuando a Carrero Blanco le hacen... Presidente del gobierno. So, Carrero Blanco is named president of the government. Él sigue con la misma rutina en la medida porque era un hombre muy gris. He was a very great man, so he follows this routine all the way. He, he was no, not the creative type, let's say. No cambió nada su forma de ser de, de, de ser presidente del gobierno o antes de que era presidente del gobierno. So, before and after he was named president of the government, his, his routine was absolutely the same. He didn't change. He was very great. Lo único que en vez de ir a, a misa pues, todos los días, pues por, me figuro, por reuniones o por cosas, razones de su cargo, pues, pues no iba. So the only thing that changed is was he was not going to this mass every day. He was, you know, that's the only thing that changed. But he was still going to the same mass at the same time at the same place. Aumentaron la escolta. And he had a bigger escort to him because of the more important, you know, Uh, position. Y entonces, aunque estuvimos un par de veces para preparar la acción, no apareció. Y entonces se descartó la, el secuestro. So, uh, after a couple of times that we were trying to get the, the operation ready, didn't show up, he didn't show up. So, uh, they, they moved on from the idea of, of kidnapping. He reminds you of your grandpa, the man talking. The man talking was one of the men who were in charge of the operation. Uh, yeah, one of the authors, uh, one of the absolute uh, pioneers of the space. He was Houston. Uh, he was, uh, yeah, he was Houston in this Spanish space race. Y se decidió ejecutarle. So they decided to execute him. La información Sorry. no solo resultó exacta, sino que se comprobó que a Carrero le acompañaba una escolta de dos policías. So the information was not only accurate, but he was informed that he had like a, an escort of two policemen. A veces, tan solo uno. Sometimes even just one. Whoopsie, there you go. I did the thing again. Whoopsie, eh, there you go. Sabíamos el recorrido que hacía Carrero, tanto para ir a, a la iglesia como para volver de la iglesia a casa, que siempre... So they knew exactly, you know, the, the, the exact uh, route that he was taking uh, from home to church, to ch from church to home, although sometimes he would go to meetings. I know this sentence from before. Volvía a casa, a no ser que algún consejo ministros, alguna cosa. Yeah, some council of ministers uh, would be in the way sometimes, but that's all. Entonces, si sabes el sitio, sabes la hora y por lo que tiene que pasar. So if you know the place, you know the time, and you know where he's... Uh, trying to, he's, you know, where he's going to go through, but you, you got it, right? Pues lo de poner un coche era un poco para que tendría que pasar a um, disminuir la velocidad y, uh, y no más. Y lo... So they placed one, one car, so he would reduce his speed, and that was it. O por un sistema de, como se enciende el sentido. It was a simple system, you know, like, like lightning, lightning, uh, 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 a light bulb. It was the, the, the electrical system was very simple. This, this footage is from the movie. This is not the real footage, okay? This is from the movie. So the bullshit that people said later. And all that bullshit, you know, came... Uh, all that bullshit that people said after the fact, you know, about the... the And you'll see, you know, they were saying a lot of fake stuff. You know, people were making up shit. It was because the, the regime was so surprised that this happened. They couldn't fathom, you know, that that a, a few guys, you know, with a, with a, some explosive and a very simple operation, you know, a lot of work because they had to dig a tunnel under the road all the way, you know, manually and trying, you know, it was months 
months and months of work, to be honest. But still, you know, they were very simple people. They were not, you know, super agents with superpowers. They were just a few guys and dynamite. Pensaban que se podía atentar contra contra Carrero ni, ni contra ningún ministro. So they couldn't fathom that a Carrero or any minister could be attacked. Tenía una prepotencia tal. They had such hubris. Que se pensaban que eran intocables. They thought they were untouchable. Que dijeron que se había habido un técnico de la legión extranjera. En el... So they made they made up that there, there, there was some technician from some uh, foreign nation or whatever. Explosivos y tal y cual. Eso es todo mentira. O sea. And he says that that's all a lie. He's one of the guys that were saying this. Pone una carrera dinamita. Es, es un circuito. Making a dynamo charge is just a circuit. So, you know, very simple. <laughs> a few guys and dynamite sounds like a good title for a book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for translate. Ah, no problem. I don't know. Um, um, yeah, I, I hope I can bring some understanding to some political situations, you know, some recent historical situations of, of my home country. And, and I hope it's useful, you know, to understand some, some, some movements that were countering very difficult, you know, operations to, to challenge power. Even when they're controversial, controversial as fuck, like ETA, you know. They're incredibly controversial. They, they've been the boogeyman of, of the state. Even right now, the right wing continues to use ETA as the boogeyman. And they've been, you know, dismantled for, for a decade or so. So, yeah, something to do with the sensory input. I'm good. Still very tired. Oh, don't. Get some rest, fam. Be, be okay. Just relax. And I will take care of you, okay? Need a day or two to recover from work week. Oh, damn it. All nighter charity stream. Yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, I know. Yes, just take it easy. Let, let us take care of you if you want to. And if you need to go and take a nap, do it. No worries. Book is that, <laughs> book is that title for a later date. <laughs> uh, yeah, really good film title. Self-care is important. Yes, self-care is praxis, people. So moving on. Yeah, they're all these legends, you know, they're just a few guys with a bunch of dynamite. You hit the contact, there's a thousand ways of doing it. Esas cosas vienen un poco por las razones interesadas que tuvo el Partido Comunista. But there were also interests, interests on behalf of the Communist Party and... El, el gobierno va con el exilio y tal the past government in exile and so on. They, were, they had their reasons, you know, to make up all of those stories about super agents and, you know. As they didn't expect it expected and they didn't know anything at all about the operation, they couldn't assimilate the fact. <coughs> that a series of young people and people in, in ETA we were children back then, right? And they could do something that they couldn't even fathom doing, you know, they, they couldn't even figure out they could do. That's real footage, by the way. Carrero visita regularmente la iglesia de los jesuitas en la calle de Serrano. Hasta que salta por los aires el 20 de diciembre de 1973, la acción fue llevada puntualmente por esta organización. So, between the knowledge that, that the, the motherfucker was going to, to mass, to the same place, you know, up to the execution of the plan, the, the, the plan was, you know, the, 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 uh, the, this action was being organized since, since the knowledge, since they had the knowledge and they could confirm that he was you know, the information was confirmed. They were working on the operation all the way. Yeah, sleeping disorder, that sucks. If you if want to do, oh, damn it. Sorry about that. It's the same name on Twitter. Oh yeah, Aranok, yeah, yeah. Go check Aranok on Twitter. Good stuff. That's real footage from the news. It was quite the flight. 
mira, la, That's the wreck. la explosión fue a la altura esta. So he's reco uh, recounting the, where the explosion was. Yeah, that's, that's the same building now, well, nowadays, when the documentary was shot, which is probably <laughs> a while ago. If it was uploaded in 2011, and I think it's, this is earlier. Porque paralelamente a este muro corre la calle de Claudio Cuello. Yeah, entonces, the, con la inercia the street coche, was on the other side of this wall. Pasa limpiamente el tejado so, y tropieza en aquella esquina que se ve pues que está eh, rehecha después. Y luego ya cae en, So the car went over the roof and stumbles on the on that corner that you can see that it's been remade and it falls all the way to the to the yard. Um, vertical hasta tropezar en el suelo. Y cae pues la parte de atrás que es más mullida, pues hizo de amortiguador, pero de todas maneras, bueno, pues quedó de, bastante de, deteriorado el coche. So the, the back part of the back side of the car was a little bit softer, but still, you know, the car was a wreck, basically. It didn't, it didn't help, you know, the fall and the explosion and everything. Las cosas sido de otra piece of manera. shit, Franco. Si piece of shit, Fraga. See this motherfucker here? Uh, Las cosas let me pause sido it. De otra this motherfucker here, this is Fraga. He was the founder, one of the founders of the Conservative Party in Spain uh, after the transition. He was a piece of shit. He was signing death sentences. And uh, he was considered, he's considered by the mainstream one of the fathers of the Spanish constitution and current quote unquote democracy. Fuck this guy. So it wouldn't have gone this way if, if the kidnap plan was, would, would have been successful. But it wasn't, you know, there was no way to kidnapping in, in a clean and successful way. Desde el comienzo de la Operación Ogro hasta el nombramiento de Carrero Blanco como presidente del gobierno. From the beginning of Operation Ogre up, up until the naming of, uh, of, uh, of, of this eyebrow motherfucker here who is... Look at those eyebrows. So you can see them in this shitty, you know, low resolution uh, film. That's, that's how powerful they were. E even through the glasses. Anyway, up until the he was named uh, president by the dictator, who is in the back lurking like a piece of shit he was. In June 1973, So up until you know, uh, up until a certain point, the commando was was still organizing the the structure for kidnapping. Okay. Realmente fue una conmoción política, pero que mm, se pasó por este trance. It was a political shock, and but people went through this sin, transition without, trauma, without any trauma. This was the burial of the eyebrow. Oh, uh, he probably had very hairy testicles as well. Uh, they were flying high in the sky. Uh, but they didn't prevent him, you know, from the crash. They, they were not very good cushioning. But yeah. Oh, that's uh, the 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 one who was going to be the king after the death of the dictator, Prince Juan Carlos de Borbón, was there, and also probably the Egyptian. Yeah, the the, the Egyptians were there. Castellano in el C it, this is Avenue Castellana. Was a, it's a big avenue that crosses most of the center of Madrid, more or less, certain of the calzada, despegado de la presidencia del acto. It was a massive burial. There you go. That that would be the king, this motherfucker here, who was groomed by Franco to become the king. The illegitimate piece of shit of the royal house of the Borbones, the Bourbons. So that they, these fuckers are preventing a third Spanish Republic with the Republican values, uh, not Republican <laughs> in an American way, but the values of the Republic as the, the ultimate expression of democracy, the will of the people, the res publica, the public uh, thing, right? Did they have public uh, crucifixions at the time? No, no, they did, you know. No, but public truck. No, no. They they did they did something way way more awful. Let me see if they say, uh, "Garrote Bill." Let me see if we can. Yeah. 
They had this other method of execution that was incredibly cruel, though. Uh, it was called garrote. It was this chair, and, and they held the neck of the prisoner, and they 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 bolt. They had a bolt, and they were screwing the bolt until it, it crossed uh, his uh, neck, basically. Incredibly painful, incredibly cruel. This is in the Philippines, probably, yeah. Yeah, Philippines. And they were doing it all the way in the dictatorship, but, but mostly it was a, a, it was a, they were shot basically. All the executions were shot, but sometimes you know they did the, the garrote was incredibly incredibly cruel. It's explained to um, explain American Republicans means in other countries. Yeah, yeah, definitely, and and libertarian, <laughs> libertarian in Spain is equals uh, anarcho communist basically. Zanzi had a good bit about it during the Cherry stream. Yeah, Zanzi is awesome. Ch Zanzi is based, and I, 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 I totally deferred to his wisdom because I'm, I'm, I'm le less cultured, less educated. I'm a member of the working class, so I don't have his absolute skill. But yeah, to be fair, I'm struggling with the with this in the other in another way because I'm researching libertarian education, like Paul Robin, Francisco Ferrer. Yeah. And everyone's like, but libertarians are really bad, not the old ones. <laughs> I heard Sansi say there will be clips. Yeah, it's cool. So there's that. The king, the piece of shit. Who is actually, he's, today he's on the run on Arab Emirates. On the run from justice because he stole a shit ton of money. He embezzled a shit ton of money and, and commissions from the Saudis. Uh, yeah, it's fucked up. Still confused by American libertarianism. Yeah, it's fucked up. It's just as it's just anarcho-capitalism, basically. There should be v video on demand's various sections. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. I wasn't organizing that one, to be honest. And you know, big charity streams have their own value, but it, they're very difficult to watch in their entirety. And uh, it should be, you know, for for some spectators to actually clip whatever they like and put it separately in a video. I don't think the organizer, because it's so much so much effort, you know, to organize these, these things. It's complete, complete, completely, completely complicated. That, yeah. So the fascists were ready in case of revolt. But nothing happened. Vamos, creo que todos los que fuimos testigos de, de aquel hecho nos hemos cuenta en definitiva de que eh, la general del pueblo español estaba en calma. So, in fact, you know, most of the Spanish people were calm. You know, there was no sign of revolt. To be honest, you know, most of the revolts would happen around labor, the labor movement and the working class movement. Also, considering that ETA was becoming, you know, more specialized in the Basque country. And... Uh, and they didn't have the support of the Communist Party, who were, had their own plans. And, and don't get me wrong. I mean, the Communist Party has its merits as well in, in Spain. But the, the, the Spanish Communist Party did a lot of fuck-ups, historical fuck-ups that are difficultly forgivable, to be honest. But, you know, it's just the Spanish one and just, uh, you know, a couple of things. But right now we have like very very good people in the in the spanish communist party to be honest yeah like uh, people like alberto garzon who is an economist and really really cool guy uh, all in all <laughs> he's a bit of a nerd but you know we got plenty of nerds in the left and they're they're adorable i wish i could be you know have that capacity i'm just a i'm just this uh, bozo piece of shit anyway so fuck me uh moving on I'm surprised that the eyebrows were not protruding from the coffin. There you go, that's the king, piece of shit. Fuck off. Piece of shit. Pieces of shit everywhere. All of the fascists. And they're, they're cheering the, the bishop. That other piece of shit. Cheering the army. Fascist orgy. Everybody was enraging and 
Nerds of the World United. There you go. We love we love nerds. I wish I had the capacity. Yeah, nothing nothing to see here. Just kidding. But say like the death of, of this motherfucker will change the course of the of the Spanish history, but not the course of the ETA history. But because they they were going their own way. That was for them it was just another operation, okay? And the organization stayed exactly the same after the death of Carrero Blanco. Y meses más tarde, conocería una nueva escisión. And months later they would, you know, they would meet another escission, you know, they would split again, a new split. La muerte de Carrero es el hecho fundamental uh, para los movimientos de la oposición. The death of Carrero is a fundamental fact for the opposition movement to the dictatorship. You love being a giant nerd, Arnok? Yeah. Thank you. You're you're generous. I I throw a lot of shit on me on myself because I'm very depressed and and I hate myself. But I want to make myself useful at least to the cause, you know. And cheer you up because you're you're worth a lot. I'm not worth shit and fuck me, you know. But fuck that shit. Uh, you should love nerds. Absolutely, we all love nerds. I I think that's unanimous. We love nerds. Nerdy people, uh, uh, white and nerdy. Uh, <laughs> But also black and nerdy. There's a lot of black nerds that need to be acknowledged. And, uh, you know, Latin American uh, native nerds. There are ner nerds of all shapes and colors. I know some Vietnamese nerd that comes, comes to mind. <laughs> Everyone is a nerd in some way. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, it was most of, yeah, academic nerds, you know, because of the high capacity for learning and studying all the good stuff, right? It's trying to tag you. <laughs> You're going to need you. Are you going to see, see and appreciate? It? Yeah, thank you. You're 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 wonderful, uh, Rum Knights. Thank you for that. Thank you for the kind words. We really appreciate it. Uh, it's difficult to. Yeah, it's you know my depression has my self esteem and self image uh, through the floor. I haven't been you know since I came back to Madrid. My life fell apart, and I've been I've been in shambles since then. But I'm trying. Okay, I'm trying. Self-deprecation is counter-revolutionary. I hear you. I hear you. I can't help myself, but I understand. Yeah, Matron's Militia, you're absolutely right. I'm failing. It is it is what it is. You know, know how the, that feels? Experience the same feelings. Yeah. And it sucks, you know, because I don't know. You're you're awesome. Uh, you, you, I could hear you talking for hours. I can listen to you talking for hours. You're, you're absolutely based. None of us are special. Yeah, and that makes us all special. Yeah, I mean, concept special is like, what? Are you special because you got special special things inside of your hams that are good? And that's, you know, in that way, everyone's special. But nobody's special in the way that ha, I'm good and you all suck. That's, that's, uh, that's uh, a level of sucking that is uh, reserved to some uh, monsters like uh, fucking Destiny and the Swords. They only care about themselves, like a uh, Stephen Chowder and 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 the other this, the other small evil guy um, uh, th that loves the p word, right? But you know, um, that's those narcissistic qualities is something that we need to get rid of our you know our baggage, you know, just throw it away, you know, become better people who love others, not just oneself. But yeah, there's a, there's a balance and, and everything. And yes, I was talking about the amazing Luna. Luna, who rocks. And EJ, both people, fantastic people from the screens. That I would love to meet in real life someday, but seems unlikely so far. We have to learn to, uh, have to ring this weirdo and cap thinking <laughs> about schools. I think the retirants are right in the uncap realm. Yeah. We have to learn to love ourselves. Yeah, it's, it's a difficult process. I used to, huh? I, I didn't have it that bad. I mean, I used to be all right. Something really bad happened in my life, and and I, I could, just couldn't. Something was really bad in my life, and I just couldn't get up from there. It's just, yeah. Thank you for all the love and the appreciation. Uh, but enough about me. Let's keep on, yeah. The Sharpie, uh, P, Sharpie word. Uh, referred to to us as 
as the small man who was who loves the p word <laughs> yeah Shapi word Ben Shapi word dry Shapi word so anyway it was it was not a big shock you know for for ETA but it was a big shock for the political life in, in Spain y in the 70s para la preocupación del poder de la dictadura que combinado unos con otros condujeron a lo que se ha llamado la transición so combining this pivotal, pivotal point, you know, having that Carrero Blanco kid like that, you know, the dictatorship uh, side, they lost all of their confidence and their hubris, you know, they, they lost, they, it was a big morale, you know, they, 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 they felt themselves vulnerable after 40 years of, of being, you know, almighty. And the political forces who were ready to the opposition, you know, they felt themselves encouraged. Even when, you know, they were uh, uh, outwardly shitty and disavowing the, the thing, you know, outwardly, but it was actually very, very good for, for the transition. The problem is how the transition was carried uh, uh, was carried later on, but that's that's for another episode, I suppose. But it was, it was carried on in a very shitty way. Like uh, the motherfucker we saw before uh, who was signing death sentences was uh, very involved. The, the military were really involved in it and the military were extremely brainwashed to us fas fascism. So the, the compromise was very insufficient, uh, to say the least. Como, as soon as Carrero, he noticed this, he got news from the death of Carrero. Carrero. He traveled to Estoril in France. Y para que tomara partido activo, que se pusiera al frente. And he convinced Don Juan, who was the father of the motherfucker king, piece of shit, who we had after Franco, but he was the father who was dis disavowed by the Franco dictatorship, so he could lead the lead the the conservative side of the opposition to Franco, because the opposition to Franco came from the left and the right. So there's that. Uh, not to derail the combo, something very bad happened to me. Not that radicalized me. We have to be there to lift each other up. You know the drill. We're here. I'm here for you all. Okay. Just hit me up on Twitter if you if you need something in particular. Okay. I'm my DMs are usually open and tend to. I'm gonna help a comrade later and a comrade in India to find some censored information from the Communist Party that we're gonna figure out how to you know. Send it over. De una manifestación democrática, de la imposibilidad de continuar el régimen. So they wanted democracy. Por tanto, con su hijo, con Juan Carlos. Hace... That would face the, the this Borbón father with his son, the motherfucker who was king after the fact. But they were pushing for democracy from outside of Spain, all the exiled forces in Spain and all the conservative people who were also uh, excised from the fascists. Y bien, preparando. Uh, estas uh, movimientos que serían de apoyo a Don Juan. They were preparing these movements, conservative movements that were to be speared by the father of the, let's say the grandfather of our current king, which is the father of the motherfucker who took over after Franco died. Viajé mucho, con muchísima frecuencia a París. He traveled to Paris very often. Unas veces con Don Juan, otras veces solo. Y en... Sometimes with Don Juan, sometimes by himself. En esos encuentros de París, eh, muchas veces invité a comer en el Hotel Lotti, en la Rue Castiglione, en la Place Vendôme. Y... And he invited someone to lunch in the hotel, uh, this hotel that he just mentioned, that I just forgot. Invité a comer tanto a Irujo como a Leizaola. He invited Irujo and Leizaola, so he invited like a conservative and a radical uh, person, you know, to, from the Basque Country who were you know, trying to... Con los que llegué a tener una buena amistad. And he became very good friends with them. El ambiente que se respiraba entonces, que era el final del régimen, estaba próximo y que había que construir una alternativa. So it was in the air that the regime was coming to an end and they had to build an, an alternative. Evidentemente fue un impacto tremendo por lo que tenía de, de, de catástrofe para un, desde el punto de vista humano. So the, it had a tremendous impact, he, this guy is saying, because of, uh, of its uh, dimension as a human catastrophe. Desde el punto de vista político, pues yo creo que el régimen no tenía, no tenía posibilidades. And from the political standpoint, the regime had absolutely no possibilities. It had derailed all of its uh, options. Y que Carrero, que era, digamos, un franquismo mucho más puro que el propio Franco, 
and Carrero, the eyebrow motherfucker, uh, with his testicles flying high in the sky, along with his eyebrows, and in a, in an undescripted order, um, he was more Francoist than Franco. He was so hardcore Francoist. He was absolutely, you know, loyal to the fascist cause. In fin, mucho menos. And uh, you know that that side of the of the of the Francoist regime was even much less had even much less chances because that, back at the time uh, in the 1960s or something there there, there was born this other economical type of kind of quote unquote progressive wing with uh, inside of the fascist regime which was, was called the technocrats that believed in in the economic power it was a it was a, a pre essay of of neoliberalism they were you know trying to run the economy and make it into like a a veneer of progress inside of backwards uh, totalitarian francoist spain hubiera pensado seriamente en que a franco le hubiera sucedido un régimen con carrero pues la catástrofe había sido inmediata so to someone who planned to have carrero succeed franco uh, after his death they would they were totally devastated ahora por otra parte creo que las cosas estaban ya de tal manera definidas en aquel momento que lo que hubo pues fue lo, lo, lo tremendo lo tremendo del suceso pero insisto desde el punto de vista humano yo creo so he's saying that the 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 the, the table was set in uh, in which in such a way at the moment that 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 he's uh, he sees absolutely no chance for the Francoist regime to continue as it was, and uh, he's st still pointing out to the to the to the magnitude of the of the of the event at a human level, which you know. It is true that it sucks that you have to kill someone, but when you kill someone who is oppressing and 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 hurting uh, millions of people, uh, it sucks that it has to be done, but. It sucks. It, it it there's no easy way to these things. There's no easy work around these things. Creo que políticamente ya el camino del régimen estaba trazado y ni Carrero vivo. Hostia, Kev, Kev. Good to see you. Good to see you. Ah, oh, Kevin is in the chat. Good to see you, friend. The, yeah, I mean, yeah, that you know. The, the path was, was, was the, let's say, the, the die was cast, he was saying. Ni Carrero muerto pudieron influir decisivamente. So whether Carrero lived or died, the, the, uh, or died, the die was cast, in this, is this man's opinion. I don't, I disagree with this, but okay. En él. Esto es una, una falta de prudencia por parte del almirante Carrero. So he's saying, this guy's saying that Admiral Carrero was a little bit reckless by probably going the same way all, every day, all day, by being like a, 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 an animal of habit. Que era de una representación política de primer orden en aquel régimen. Okay, this guy's probably pro-fascist or something, I don't know. He's saying that he was a first, uh, first class uh, political rep representation within that order. Iba a unos lugares determinados a una misa todos los días a la and he was going to this mass every day at the same time y a la misma situación y sin pensar que ya estaban pues, muchas gentes de aquel mundo so he wasn't foreseeing that many people from the the terrorist world or uh, yeah were plotting against them right bajo la vigilancia de sus adversarios o enemigos but it would nobody think about the spanish uh, space race Así es que fue algo que no contribuiría a que, a que sucediera porque no estaba eh, protegido en la debida ma en la, en la debida manera. Para... So in this guy's in this guy's opinion he wasn't protected in the in a, uh, as he should have been protected. So he kind of contributed to the to his to his own demise by by promoting this lack of protection. Salvar su existencia. Boom. There he goes. Oh, that that's from the movie, of course. There's no real footage from from the actual car falling down with the with the at, at that point probably deceased uh, Spanish astronaut with his eyebrows, uh, powerful eyebrows, and powerful fascism in his uh, recently deceased brain.
Teníamos la conciencia cuando estábamos en la cárcel de que no es que la muerte de Franco o, o, eh, o la caída del régimen inmediatamente nos iba a poner en libertad. So they were conscious that when they were in jail that no, the, the Frank, Franco's death was not going to immediately release them. Pero que mientras no hubiera la muerte de Franco íbamos a estar en la cárcel, ¿no? But, uh, but also that as long as Franco lived they were going to rot in jail. Y esto era como un sucedáneo, bueno, pues por lo menos si no ha sido Franco, por lo menos ha sido el segundo. And this was, well, second best. If they couldn't kill Franco, they at least killed his, his right hand. Pero después oyendo durante esa noche la radio pirinaica. <laughs> But afterwards, uh, listen to Radio Pirinaica, Radio, radio Pirine, uh, from the Pyrenees, you know, the mountain range that divides uh, the Iberian Peninsula with the rest of the European continental mass. It separates us from France, which all of Europe, all of Europe hates France. Poor guys, poor French people. We love you, French people. I'm sorry that the rest of Europe disagrees, but we love you here. Fascists are prone to uh, arrogance. Yes, absolutely. And we need to count on that. Especially when they have been in power for a while. Definitely. Look at Reinhard uh, Heydrich. Who is... Reinhard Heydrich sounds German. I don't know about Reinhard Heydrich. 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 Reinhard Heydrich. Okay, seven of high-ranking German SS, who probably had a demise. Oh, he was in the Holocaust. Okay, death. Czechoslovak government in exile resolved to kill Heydrich. Ah, he got he got cocky too, huh? Yeah, well, I'm not gonna cry, you know. If they stop uh, sending the worst of their lot outside of the country as representatives, <laughs> kidding. <laughs> so anyway, they were. He was listening to Radio Pyrenee. Pues la verdad, eh, se te caía el alma los pies porque era una cosa. It was very demoralizing to listen to Radio Pyrenee, which was like the clandestine radio that they had uh, to, you know, probably uh, uh, broadcasting from, from the French side of things to inform people in, inside. Echevarrita se llamar a la Radio Pirineica la Radio Paranoica, ¿no? This guy Echevarria used to call uh, Radio Pirineica, the Pirine ra radio. He used to call it Paranoid Radio. <laughs> Y entonces era todo el tiempo llamando a la movilización y que estuviera los ciudadanos. They were calling to mobilization all the time. Ciudadanos alerta porque puede for people to be alert. Haber un asalto de las cárceles. Eh, Because there could be a raid on jails. Contra los presos y tal. ¿no? Against the prisoners. Que, que nosotros no, no pensábamos que, que fuera a ser así. And they didn't think it was going to be like that when they were in, in prison, right? 1001. El atentado coincide en el tiempo con uno de los procesos más célebres de los últimos años del dictador. So the, 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 the bombing coincides in time with one of the most uh, famous uh, processes uh, during uh, the Spanish, the later years of the Spanish dictatorship. Se juzga a ocho dirigentes de las comisiones obreras, encabezados por dos de sus dirigentes más caracterizados. So many, many of the heads of Comisiones Obreras, which was uh, one of the major uh, unions, uh, at the moment was clandestine, but it was huge. And they're, they're, some of their dirigents are on trial at the, at the time of the bombing. And that's Marcelino Camacho, definitely. That, that guy in the picture, that's Marcelino Camacho. Que lo son del Partido Comunista. Also people from the Communist Party. Marcelino Camacho y Nicolás Sartori. Marcelino Camacho and Nicolás Sartorius, who went later on uh, on the leadership of uh, of uh, Comisiones Obreras, uh, and uh, Sartorius, who would be on the Socialist Party, I think. Pasará a la historia por el número de su sumario, el mil uno. Y una vez más. So history knows this as the uh, of the um, file uh, uh, number one thousand and one. Producirá el efecto contrario al deseado. And besides, it would produce uh, the opposite effect to the desired one. Mostraría al mundo la verdadera cara de aquel régimen. It would show the world the real face of that regime. That was Carabanchel Jail. My dad was there. 
I said it before, but I have to say it again. Fuck that jail. Um, it's it's it doesn't exist anymore. They they threw it to the ground, and I lost the I lost the opportunity to visit Carabanchel when it was being demolished. Which was probably one of the uh, of the creepy ass ruins to be in. You know, would have been for a cool creepy pasta type of video. Uh, that's why I knew it seen. Yep, 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 yep. Slovak Nazi history, yeah. Uh, he would be driven about in an open top car, take the same route, like nobody could touch him. Yeah. Jeez, what a cocky bastard. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, like in the Picard uh, series, uh, the sheer fucking hubris. Uh, I mean, uh, Anyway, this this operation, this this trial backfired on the Franco regime. Fue de tal magnitud eh, la petición de un calibre represivo tan grande que muchos países democráticos se echaron las manos a la cabeza al ver lo que una dictadura era capaz de pedir a unos dirigentes obreros en que solo pedíamos la libertad sindical. Y... So the, the 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 they were asking for so such a absolutely ludicrous type of sentence for for just a few or uh working uh, workers organizing organizers who were um you know they were just worker organizers uh, <clears throat> organizers and they they were the the, 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 the the sentence that they were that the that the attorney was asking for was so overkill that people all over europe were freaking out like what what the hell y derechos como en cualquier otra democracia eran vigentes y como They were asking for workers rights just in like in democracies but you know Spain was not a democracy at the time we're talking about 1973 uh, it's, you know the last years of the Franco dictatorship son vigentes en la actualidad llegamos al 20 de diciembre con una gran movilización internacional so there was a huge international mobilization up until the 20th, December the 20th. Con una movilización interna, una sensibilización de la sociedad a todos los niveles. So they were sensitizing the, the society and, you know, making awareness and there was a lot of internal awareness as well. Muy amplio. Y se was very wide. Las peticiones y justo en el momento de entrar en la sala de juicio, el carrero blanco voló por los aires. So when they were entering the, 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 the hall to start the trial and they got the news that, that uh, Carrero Blanco, our big browed, hairy, mm, testicle, uh, spaceman, piece of shit, fascist, absolute, absolute ghoul, uh, blew in the air. He made his flight. He made his, the furthest, uh, the Spanish, uh, uh, at the time, the Spanish... Uh, space career uh, the closest it was to put a, an an object in orbit y el juicio pues tuvo ya un sesgo totalmente diferente a lo of course it changed the bias of the trial all the way que es un un juicio normal so it was not a, like a regular trial anymore nuestros familiares fueron amenazados por las bandas de guerrilleros pistolas en manos so the the fascist uh, adventurers uh, were adventurists were threatening the their families gone in hand sala del juicio no se pudo hacer un juicio normal there was no chance that they were they were able to have like a more or less civil type of trial in the in this in that space anymore fiscal en un momento se tambalea borracho the attorney was all drunk and he was swinging because yeah. del estrado and he falls off the of the stage un espectáculo de durante tres días pero it was a shit show for about 3 days al una semana tuvo las consecuencias nos vino and after a week the consequences came vinieron las las condenas no solamente las que nos pedía el fiscal sino aumentadas so they they were asking for even bigger sentences and they they were approved y y en una situación ya de, de verdadera locura de me, y demencia de, del régimen. So the, the regime was absolutely unhinged at that point. It was absolute retaliation and the, 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 they, they lost their, their sentence. Oh, that's, yeah.
punto y seguido. Uh, 20 years of the festival. Okay, we're going to talk about the Festival of San Sebastián. And it makes sense because of the context. En 1973, el Festival Internacional de Cine de San Sebastián cumplía 20 años. So, back in 1973, it was the 20th anniversary of the uh, 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 Donostiaco Cinema Día, which is the, the festival, the International Movie Festival of San Sebastián, a.k.a. Donostia. Again, Donostiaco Cinema Día. Se había puesto en marcha por iniciativa de un grupo de comerciantes donostiarras que buscaban... So, it was started by a group of... of, um, of uh, uh, business owners from Donostia who were trying to reactivate uh, the tourism. Because after the civil war, you know, it wasn't it wasn't a big tourist place anymore because of the depression after, you know, the quote-unquote civil war, which I wouldn't get tired to say, it was not really a civil war, but repeat after me, an extermination war carried on by the fascists after the failed coup d'etat in 1936. So there's that. I'm getting better at reciting this. It's like a chorus of my streams. <laughs> Keeps repeating and repeating. I'm, I'm, I'm. I need to back up with the chat. Okay. Uh, what are we doing? What happened? Yeah, yeah. He was a. Yeah, the, I remember that one. I had a teacher from Spain. She'd be 50 now. I'm realizing her parents would have lived through the, through this, and it's sad to think about. Yeah. 50. So she was born in 1970, more or less. So she would be like three years old. I wouldn't be born until two years later after this, but yeah. Yeah, our parents were definitely on this struggle. My father was a Marxist-Leninist, so there's that. But, you know, uh, like a little record animation to play. Definitely, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make me a sound clip or something. <laughs> so I can play it every time I have to say this. <laughs> no, nah, I can just say it. It's easier and uh, more honest, but yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, this uh, festival. Dionisio Pérez Villar fue el más destacado puntal de una empresa que enseguida obtuvo el beneplácito y alguna ayuda económica de la Dirección General de Cinematografía y del Sindicato Nacional del Espectáculo. So, yeah, this guy Dionisio, whatever, whatever, he was the guy that started it and he got very soon very uh, early on he got support from uh, national direction of cinematography and the vertical syndicate of uh, of the show business in in spain after you know uh, the beginning of the of the francois regime we're talking about 1940s right actually no 73 73 it was 20th anniversary so 60 50 53 yeah 53 <laughs> Miguel de Charri, secretario general de este último organismo, inicia aquí su colaboración en la organización del festival. So this this guy Miguel de Charri, he starts his collaboration into as a CEO of this festival. El ayuntamiento Donostiarra y la Diputación Guipuzcoana dieron también su apoyo. So Donosti, aka San Sebastián's uh, city hall, uh, they supported the the event as well. So they were they were getting support all over to get on with this festival i i, I bet and uh, if you if you're all like movie nerds you know this festival right the the uh, movie festival of san sebastian at any rate uh yeah bueno, el festival en realidad no se creó con unos fines culturales ni artísticos so the, the festival was not started with an idea of an artistic or cultural uh, motivation It was more a commercial thing. Fue un grupo de comerciantes quienes lo crearon para mejorar la ciudad. So it was these entrepreneurs who were trying to uh, improve the image of the city. So there would again, para ampliar incluso el verano de Donostia porque lo que to, bo to boost the summer tourist campaign in, in Donostia, uh, aka San Sebastián. I'm not going to repeat San Sebastián. The, the name in Basque is Donostia, so we should you know call it like it is. Bien. Prolongar después de las regatas. Yeah, because they had these regatas, these um, boat races uh, that were very popular. Uh, they're still very popular, actually. And uh, 
Uh, yeah, uh, you know, after the the boat race season was over, everybody left. So why not? Let's make the season a little bit longer if we make this festival and uh, you know make it happen. So first year was kind of modest, but actually successful. So. Pero en cuanto Madrid, la época de Franco y compañía, vieron que aquí podía haber una mina de oro a nivel. So as they saw in Madrid that there could be like a business in the central government de sus beneficios políticos and they could reek also uh, political benefits se echaron encima de los comerciantes de los tierras los echaron a todos bueno echarlos en un sentido los quitaron vino un secretario general desde Madrid que fue Miguel de Charri que luego ya so they 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 kind of went on top and then they brought a, a secretary this Miguel de Charri from they brought him in from Madrid and they took over basically from these uh, people who were uh, you know anyway they were Anyway, they were bourgeois pieces of shit anyway, so fuck them. Fue director muchos años después y lo hizo a su, a su imagen y a, a la imagen de que entonces podía tener la época aquella. So he did everything in, in his image and the, the, the luxury type of image, uh, you know, the, 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 the standards of that time, okay? Fancy music. también consigue, tras superar una serie de dificultades que la Federación Internacional de Productores le otorgue en 1957, la categoría de festival competitivo. So, the festival, after some difficulties, gets the International Federation of, of Producers uh, to get the category of a, as a competition festival, right? So, they get kind of official. That's actually López Vázquez. He was, uh, um, I mean, uh, yeah. This guy was an anarchist. He was surviving, you know, during, during the Franco thing. But the guy was an anarchist. This guy was a fucking genius. He was, uh, yeah. Equiparándolo en rango a Cannes, Berlín y Venecia. So it's kind of in the same category as Cannes, Berlín or Venice festivals. Oh, who shut up? Oh, Lord... Lord Friteus. Welcome to the stream. Bow tie fashions. Bow ties are cool, says the doctor. Ese mismo año, tras una etapa en la que la dirección no fue desempeñada por ninguna persona concreta, se nombra directora Antonio de Zulueta. So after having no director at all in the in the festival for for a, for a year, they, they named this guy Antonio Zulueta. Quien consigue en 1958 el primer festival de relumbrón con la presencia de Alfred Hitchcock, King Vidor, Cadel Seaman, Anthony Mann, Jean Marie y Kirk Douglas. So that he got like some big names like Kirk Douglas and and uh, and Alfred Hitchcock and whatnot, right? So they were like increasing in prestige. There's the motherfucker, Hitchcock. What a fucking cinema genius and what a piece of shit of a person. Ah, that's a typical Basque with the swords and stuff. That's the Basque typical welcome. They also do a dance, which is super cool. That's, that's Basque culture over there. Uh, so yeah, he would leave the... The position. Una etapa dirigida por Francisco Ferrer se dio paso a una dirección colegiada que solo duró un año. And after, you know, some other director, they had like a board. Yada, yada, yada. Very international festival. Very fancy. El festival después de aquella temporada en la que se hizo cargo el Sindicato Vertical de Madrid siguió por sus mismos cauces. So it continued, you know, after the 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 the, the time where the vertical syndicate, uh, vertical vertical union from Madrid was taken over for a while, and then it continued on you know, its own its own way. Fue un festival netamente elitista. It was an incredibly elitist festival. Aquí al pueblo le era muy difícil entrar en el festival si no era. It was very very hard to enter the festival if you were like a commoner, unless you had a shit ton of money, basically. A, las localidades altas de pago. Uh, después las they had like paid paid very very expensive paid uh, uh, seats for for non nobility uh, that you had to pay a shit ton of money to get in. Personas que iban a las fiestas fue era una cosa totalmente cerrada. Absolutely closed. The after, after parties and everything was a closed list. Solo iban los invitados del festival y los todos los que venían de Madrid y aquí la gente de nuestra tierra del pueblo casi no se enteraba del festival, la verdad. And, you know, uh, people uh, from, from Donostia, they didn't barely notice the festival. It was for people from Madrid and um, for the international guests. 
Very fancy. Se llega así, con irregular trayectoria, tanto en lo relativo a las celebridades asistentes como en lo tocante a la calidad de las películas, irregularidad que es una característica de toda la historia del certamen, a la gestión de Carlos Fernández Cuenca. Yara, yara, filler, you know, a lot of celebrities, and uh, there is this other director, Vamos Carlos Fernández Cuenca. Se consiguen ediciones brillantes, aunque por lo general las películas seleccionadas tendían a una ambigüedad temática. He were, they were improving the festival, but the, they couldn't pick, because of the censorship, they couldn't pick uh, certain types of movies. So the, the, the themes were very ambiguous, were very washed up, if you know what I mean. The, the selection of films was not the best during the dictatorship, to say the least. En la que no podían rozarse para nada los principios fundamentales del franquismo. So yeah. Yeah, he, Hitchcock, piece of shit, absolutely. But yeah, you couldn't question the Francoist pues, en principles. Cómo estaba la situación política en España en todos estos años hubo verdaderas deserciones de películas. So coming uh, taking into account the, the political situation during those years, many many films uh, and many directors and many producers were actually uh, boycotting the festival. De productores, de directores, yo recuerdo el caso de Joseph Lorsey, que en dos ocasiones se le se le seleccionaron sus películas. Y él no aceptó ni venir como para presentar la película, que igual podía haber sido un estreno case of a director sin, el apoyo del director. Films were selected, but he denied to, to show up or to, you know, have his movie in the festival. Ni él ni su película. En dos ocasiones, yo lo sé, no, di, no quiso venir. He didn't want to come. Y luego también está, en fin, entre otros muchos que ha habido en esos años, está el caso de Luis Reiner, la actriz, que fue muy curioso porque se le alojó, se le invitó a venir al festival, él aceptó venir. She was uh, Louise Reiner. She was hosted in, in the festival. They get they get her they got her accommodations and everything. Y se le pretendía alojar en el Palacio de Ayete. So Palacio de Ayete. Let me let me look it up. Let me bring it up. Palacio de Ayete. Ayete. Yara yara yara. Journey in history. Yeah, Palacio de Ayete is where, <laughs> where he, uh, the dictator met Adolf Hitler, basically. <laughs> you know, bad mustache uh, really sucked at, uh, at, um, at uh, watercolor. He was not very good, and he was refused by by art school. So that's that's the history of Palacio Ayete, where this actress was supposed to to reside during the festival. Luis Reiner, cuando se enteró quién había estado en ese palacio años. So she, when she noticed, when she uh, got notice of who was living in that palace. <laughs> Atrás. Se negó a albergarse en ese sitio. A few years behind, she refused to, to, to be hosted in that place. Desde que no quería dormir en el mismo techo que había cobijado al dictador. Uh, she didn't want to, to sleep under the same roof who, that was the roof for the dictator and the other dictator, both of them. En 1967 llega a la dirección Miguel de Echar, quien ya había intervenido activamente en casa. I think there were some expressions of solidarity from certain parts of the Abertzale community. I'm, I'm addressing your, your question right now, uh, Rem Knights. Uh, it was the Abertzale movement who really held a lot of solidarity with the Zapatistas. But when the Zapatista revolution happened, ETA was not the same organization we're seeing in this documentary. It was the, t the military faction took over and they were practically mercenaries. The, the killing was was the, 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 the objective itself. But there was this split in a way that was, there was this weird split between Erri Batasuna was the political Abertzale movement, which is independentist and leftist, and, and Eta, the, the terrorist uh, organization at that point. Uh, uh, you know, it, was, um, it was a delicate balance. It was, there was a lot of back and forth. That's why, you know, um, the, the figure of Arnaldo Tegui, Uh, which I'll, I'll pull here. Uh, let me see, pull it up. Arnaldo Otegi. 
this guy, this wonderful guy who is absolutely based. Uh, let me see if I can find it in English. No, I'll, share the, I'll share the article with you all, okay? You can learn about this guy. He was, he's absolutely Marxism for the people. Again, he's fighting, he's, you know, moving himself in the realms of democracy. And there's a lot of anarchist uh, friends that I know in the Basque country that are Take him with a pinch of of salt. Of course, he's not, you know, beyond criticism. That's not going to happen. But check him out. Uh, the the Abertzale movement was trying to to tell uh, to reason with the military with the military faction or or what had become ETA was all military faction at that at that moment. That it was time to stop. You know, there was that the the, the armed struggle was losing its meaning. But the, the military faction didn't want to listen. It was it was very complicated, and because at the same time, you know, when there were nineteen nineties, you know, the 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 state was using uh, the the military action to demonize the the whole Basque people, not even the the Basque uh, Abertzale movement, but they were using it as a as a boogeyman, uh, as a good for all to radicalize the rest of Spain to the right. It was. Um, it was really, really difficult. Really, there's always a lot of nuance to these circumstances. But all in all, you know, the Abertzale movement stood in solidarity with the uh, with the Zapatista movement. But uh, ETA at the point was all about the guns. Si todas las ediciones anteriores del certamen y conocía bien sus entresijos, organizando nuevos ciclos y proyectando en el Astoria las películas. They were improving curso, the festival, and, you know. That's that's the entonces, that's the dance. That's the typical welcome dance from the ah, and they're taking just the feet, but it's really cool. El pueblo donostiarra no terminaba de entrar en el festival Ego. al considerar que era algo exclusivo de un determinado sector de público. Ego. Abierto el periodo. Uh, that's like a welcome dance that they do, and uh, it, it's saying like both the, the the festival was so elitist that the the people in in Donostia were not you know were not taking part or even interested in taking part. Transición política. Echarri dejó el festival en manos de Luis Gasca en 1977. So after the transition, it was taken. You know, uh, the, 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 it was changing directors. So they were they were trying to put a dignified type of show, uh, despite of the of the boycott of uh, mo most of the international boycott they were going through. Boom. Yeah, 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 some, some, something, something. And there you go. La Iglesia Donostierra de la Virgen del Coro, patrona de la ciudad, se convertía en basílica. So, yeah, I think that this is, like, totally non-related news. But, yeah, this is, uh, in a nutshell, what I wanted to, to talk about today. Um, I wanted to talk to you all uh, and try and show you, you know, a little bit of insight of a very specific moment of the history of uh, terrorism and uh, the armed struggle in the Basque country and how, you know, there was this balance between the, the part of the organization who wanted to make it about the working class and there was this part that wanted to make it about the armed struggle and the armed struggle by itself. And I think that's, that's a, I think a, a learning opportunity for... for Ah, don't worry about it. Uh, there's gonna be a um, a VOD for a for a for a while in in Twitch, and I'm gonna upload. I'm recording everything for YouTube, so you can you can catch it up later. Uh, load free, just don't worry about it. And um, you know, it, it's it's a it's a dedicated. I don't know what y'all think, uh, people in the chat, uh, about you know violence, the use of violence in, in a revolutionary context. Like, it's, it's very delicate because it, 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 it's a clear and it is not in the Maoist sense, but definitely a contradiction in a way that we know, we, we want to make a better world for everybody without leaving anyone behind to get past all of these hierarchical and, and oppressive uh, ways of the world right now. But at the same time, to get that, we need to do some really nasty things, really bad and pleasant, unethical, and absolutely horrendous things. So it's very, it's very difficult, you know, deciding uh, what kind of actions you're going to take, 
who's going to be struck on those actions, uh, what political implications or what political effects would, would we want to get when we want to do something like that. It is, uh, it is so nuanced, so delicate, and so ugly at the same time, right? I'm going to, yeah, it's a very delicate issue. Yeah, The, the whole conversation has been uh, really good. Oh, yeah. Look at your hands and catch up when it's on YouTube. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's a very delicate issue because we need to make sure we don't allow violent power to become a new hierarchy. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's, it's a, uh, keep, keep keeping in mind, it's, it's just so many things to keep in mind, to be honest. Uh, you just might <laughs> that I'm French. I should make more efforts to inform about the Basque country and its struggles. Yeah, you got Iparralde in uh, French territory, south, uh, southwestern France. Uh, my views uh, kind of align with something of a friend of mine was for fond of saying. We sacrifice now when we have to, s so that others after us don't need to. Yeah, but you know, it's not our sacrifice, uh, but also the lives. It sucks because you're saying like the lives of the fascists and the oppressors. And it, it really sucks because... How can you defend the lives and the dignity of the fascists and the oppressors? But in a way, how hard it must be to take a life. I don't... For me, it's unfathomable. I can, I can you know, destroy as much property as, as you want, you know. Pff, fuck property, you know, it's just stuff. But lives of people... I'm I'm all for giving them, you know, useful jobs and and talking, you know, having psychologists and and psychiatrists talking to them. I'm all for restorative justice all the way. But it it is also true that the circumstances, the situations that we're in right now are also so violent, so un unbalanced. They're so uh inescapable, right? I'm not a pacifist, but I would rather avoid violence. Yeah, same here. But I, I'm, I, I'm actually thinking how avoidable violence is given the situations that we're living today in our localities. How avoidable it is. Uh, you know, Mao had this point, you know, that, that power stems from the barrel of a gun. It, and it sucks. It, it's, you know, the, the thing that something sucks doesn't mean it, it's less true, if you know what I mean. Also, I think that, like, someone mentioned about taking up arms is so we can put them down. Yeah, yeah, that, that was, yeah. I think it was a point that Kamazot kind of made it as well, right? Violence will be forced on you regardless. Yeah, I'm, one of the things that I'm, I always say is that we're, we're, it's not that we want war. It's that we're at war already, but we're not fighting it. They are. They're giving it all they got. And we're just taking the punches, like the brave, you know, strong people we are. But there, there has to be a point when, where we stop taking punches. Then how do you punch back? You know, take, take the means that they have to punish us, definitely, you know, and try and, and minimize that, those casualties. But there has to be some, some way out of this situation that is so difficult. We can go all Shining Path. No, Shining Path is a, was a cult, a death cult. Fuck Shining Path. F Shining Path was not Marxist at all. And uh, yeah, stuff can be rebuilt. People are a lot harder to rebuild. Yeah. And people need, need, need saving. I, I would say, you know, most, most of the bad, bad stuff that happens to us comes out of places of fear uh, denial and ignorance, you know, and a lot of dissociation. You know, you, you, it, most people are separated from the, the, the values of, of life, you know, and, and taking care of life. Like uh, they, they make up like the, those, um, th that new language that makes things, you know, like restructuring instead of firing a shit ton of people, right? And ruining their lives forever, which is what they're doing. But they say restructuring and they have to downsize. Uh, the company or whatever it's not there they're, they're not kicking people out in the street you know that that kind of separation that dissociation between the violence they do and what they say they do is fucked up can't imagine taking someone's life yeah i think we tend to do that only when we see 
no other options left. Definitely. So we, we need to work on the other options too. And most importantly, yes. But we oh, it's also, you know, to to face the fact that that is a possibility. You know, we need to, like, uh, I think it's Angie Speaks who had a video about confronting the shadow, right? Uh, it's a very weakened concept, which is, I think, psychologically very valuable, right? It's very fucked up. Violence is auxiliary to the work of the revolution. We're not doing the other work. It's just ad adventurism. I, I agree so much. So much of the good work. Uh, some of the videos that I made about the, the Spanish revolution, you know, before... They were they were meant to be like like that, you know. They were they were meant to be like uh, all the work, you know, getting to work, organizing, you know. It's super important. It's much more important than the violence. There has to be all kinds of. I, I believe deeply in diversity of tactics. To be honest, I think it's the job of the reformed to take the work of the reforming others and their ilk, like Christian Piccolini. Yeah, Faraday speaks, and you know, people who were on the right. Aaron from the re-education who got very radicalized for the right. The civil rights marches here in Northern Ireland were beaten down constantly. Yeah. It wasn't until the burning of, of Bombay Street by loyalist mobs, added by the police and British army, five people were killed and over a hundred wounded. That's when the troubles started. Nobody wanted it. But you can just stand by while right-wing mobs kill people and burn families out of their homes. Yeah, you can't just stand by, definitely. Like, not to separate, but I think this is the work that they're most capable of because they have the tools to connect that I don't know how to, ha yeah, I don't have at all. Conceptually get why people join those movements, but I don't, I, I know they're good at convincing someone to change it. The thing is, we're, we're all, brainwashed in this capitalist realism this competition bullshit and our lives are difficult so it's very it's a very easy way to go like uh kill everybody or uh, otherize other people and you know make them make them into objects so you get all fashy on them but when things are getting fashy on the fashy side what are we going to do it's self defense but self defense can escalate, and that's when I when I, when I wanted to show you all about ETA. It's uh, it's about you know the military faction took over the whole movement, and th they had to separate. But at that at that time, the the whole violence escalated so much that they were demonized by the state. So there was it was a catch twenty two. It was very difficult. Uh, obviously, nothing is obtained through violence alone. The foremost concern for leftists should be the rear, definitely. Mutual aid, community building, absolutely. And when it come to, comes to show, uh, be ready to fight. It's not only about confronting the bad guys, also about showing the future ahead. Yeah, and that's, that's something that we need to do more, to be honest. Uh, we're doing it, okay? It's just more of that, please. <laughs> more of the constructive stuff. I know this was a little bit of a dark stream, but I'm facing I'm facing this this violent and dark stuff, uh, so you know we all think a little bit about things. And I was getting so excited, you know, about the motherfucking fascist blowing up in the air, you know, because he was he was awful. He was an absolute ghoul who was oppressing uh, millions of people. So no, nothing is obtained through violence alone, obviously. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So um, I think I understand what you're saying, but there's something on the side of the left. I was a liberal not that long ago. You see, you, you can go better. You can get better. And a lot of my other times I spend reaching out to my friends and family who are still liberals. Yeah, you can do a lot of outreach. You know, as I say, you know, most people who are militant liberals who are like in the, in the base are people who mean well, who, but just cannot imagine a world that's out of capitalism and we need to make people understand how capitalism is is the the source of many of our problems uh, overwhelmingly the majority of our problems right we shouldn't have more queer rights we wouldn't ah we wouldn't okay we wouldn't have most queer rights in canada or the usa without riots yeah absolutely absolutely yeah and fuck fuck private property uh, strike where 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 it hurts 
you know, but you also don't strike mom and pop's business, you know, strike fucking Amazon warehouse and burn it to the ground. Uh, all of them. I'm saying in, in the, <laughs> I'm saying in the, uh, while transmitting on the Amazon platform, you know, it's property, uh, but human life is incredibly valuable too. It's, it's very delicate balance. I'm, I'm showing you the dirty and the, and the bad. So it's food for thought, if you know what I mean, in a video game. Absolutely. Absolutely. There, there was this video game where, where you killed, you know, you, you took over, you know, that, that, that Amazon warehouse and expropriated one after the other without needing to destroy it or burn it to the ground. You know, like Hugo Chavez, expropriase, expropriase, expropriase. And expropriations are, are a re really good tool, you know, to disenfranchise uh, the capitalists. And uh, that's where it hurts the most, you know. But we need to really be careful because we also saw the example of Salvador Allende with... Uh, with Fidel Castro, you know, how Salvador Allende was very, very trusting of his peaceful revolution. And he was doing a fantastic job, but nobody saw coming, you know, the fact that the, that the military were not going to be loyal to his government and they were going to take over because of the CIA were, were empowering the military to, to overthrow them. And then, you know, Pin Pinochet happened, one of the worst disaster in human rights in the, in the 20th century. Uh, I mean, we have... Well, there's, it's a steep competition, I must say. You know, 20th century was not the best thing that happened to human rights ever. But again, then again, human rights have yet to see the best years, hopefully, if we take over. If we, the left, take over, basically. I already know I'm ravished at convincing my family because I just can't com connect like that. Yeah, it doesn't have to be your family, you know. Family family have a way to push buttons, you know. So we we don't get very good at at our at our game, you know, of, of which is not we're not even fooling people. We're telling them simple truths, you know, simple things. We may be wrong about a lot of stuff, but basically <laughs> it's worth trying to do better and there's a lot of things that are worth giving a shot trying. What we cannot do, we what we cannot do by no means is, you know, is staying, keeping business as usual. We, we're like, do you remember that video game called Lemmings? We're like little creatures that were falling to precipices and stuff and falling to their deaths. Feels a little bit like that, that we're like the lemming creatures, you know. We, we don't have any agency on, on our lives. Another sea equality... A step down, they won't just hand it to you. Definitely. You need to be ready to take it. Yeah, yeah. Freedom is earned. Freedom is earned. It is what it is. Power for people who won't give us the rights if we ask them nicely. Definitely not. Uh, there's a Malvina Reynolds song. Uh, it is a nice, right? Uh, which I don't know if I can play on stream, but, you know, it isn't nice to block the doorway. It isn't, it isn't nice to go to jail. There are, there are nicer ways to do, is, to do it, but the nice ways always fail. It isn't nice. It isn't nice. You told us one, once, you told us twice. But if that's freedom's price, we don't mind. That's a great, great song, by the way. Highly recommended. Malvina Reynolds. Great uh, singer-songwriter, I must say. In the way, uh, and a great representative of what actually was the hippie movement before it was uh, commodified by, by the Woodstock Festival and the drug industry. In the words of black author Kimberly Jones, as far as I'm concerned, they can burn this bitch. Target, uh, target Hall of Fame. Yeah. To the ground. And it, is still, and it still wouldn't be enough. They are lucky blacks are after equality and not after revenge. Right on. Right on. Those are words to live by. And I think with this, I'm going to wrap it up, good people. I'm going to stop this recording. Thank you very much for joining. <laughs>